Greetings. Greetings, greetings. We here about to start soon. Brother Murray's on, Brother Rojo. Um, so I guess we'll wait to be joined. I'm gonna turn on my camera shortly. Guys, how does my sound, um, how's my sound? Um, do you hear a lot of background noise? No, it sounds good. Okay, great. You don't sound good though. Okay. You sound far away. Can you talk again? Let's try to. Yeah, can you hear me? Mm. No? It's still a little low. Oh, Last oh. time, what was it, Monday? You sounded so good and clear. Was it, is it low or muffled? <laughs> low and muffled. Oh, my God. Okay. Why did this sound, why did it sound like that? I don't know. I don't know. Let me try to figure is it your, are you on your phone? I have got my uh, headphones attached to my computer. Your SOS? Not attached. My headphones. Your headset. That's correct. My headset attached. You sound so low, right, um, Rojo? Can you hear him? Okay, Rojo must be texting and stuff, but I can barely hear you. Okay. Can you switch devices? Actually, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can. Oh, you sound device. good. You sound good now. Yeah, you know why? Because I had it on the microphone USB as opposed to the microphone C922 Pro Stream. Oh, cam. okay. So I connected okay. it to the cam. So <laughs> better, right? Yes. Thank <laughs> gosh. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. And then good. um, you can you you can see me, right? Yep, I can see you. And, How's my uh, lighting? Everything was How good. Do you feel about my lighting? Yeah, yeah. Lighting is good. Um, let me see what else. Uh, need to see a like little a bit. Ra raise it up a little bit more. We want to see the full uh, tires. The whole turn the whole yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay. I'm always scared that you're not. You're gonna see. <laughs> my mom's like, 
<laughs> Huge, um, I don't know if you can see it sometimes. Uh, like this, this picture, this amazing uh, picture that my dad took of my mom when she was young, and <laughs> then my good, uncle man. found it and blew it up and gave it to her as a gift. So we right? are blessed by it. <laughs> in a two piece. Nice, nice, nice. We That's are good. blessed to have it in the in the living room area here. Beautiful, beautiful, above beautiful. The mantle. <laughs> So I'm always trying to like hide that, mm. but I'm glad that my turban you're able to see Looks that. Good. Perfect. And okay, good. I feel like I look like a little bit of a cone head. No, you're good. You you edit good. this out though. You keep shifting it. You gonna you gonna shift it off. I know. You know right? it is. Keep messing with it and then. Okay. I'm telling you. You're like oh, oh, man. Oh. It's supposed to look like a mushroom. It looks like a cone head. No, Anywho, good, okay. <laughs> I'm always doing this behind the scenes, though, by the way. Blooper is here. <laughs> okay, idea. so how does this look? Oh, and then I was also trying to get this whole thing. I see it. I see it. I see it. It looks good. Um, I see the, of course, the, um, the learn the art of vending. Okay. Who says you can't vent that? And then the other one, is that the uh, uh, Smart Run University, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Everything is perfect. Nice. Awesome. Very, very awesome. Nice. Awesome. So we're going out, you know, I want to wait to be joined at least by one person. Okay. Um, for it to, you know, make a little sense here. Of course. And formally introduced and all that great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. But in the meantime, the 19th is cooking up to be something good. I spoke to um, Powerful Pioneer member. She was on last time as well. Sister Adrian. Davis, okay. the after school program. Yes. She does Primerica as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we're trying to figure that part out in terms of um, presenting on that. I don't know if that clashes too much with um, what Brother Raymond does. Um, so we're just going to see about that. But she says she invited a lot of people. So Okay. Well, you know, the thing is that, um, you know, at least she'll be the, the female perspective, you know what I mean? Yeah. Of, of, of that. I mean, there are there there are some similarities. There's some sort of differences in their ideologies, in a sense. But it's nothing. It's not a major. All the information is pretty much the pretty much the same in certain areas. But um, mm -hmm. you know, listen. Having that light detection, basically. Yeah, you know what I mean. So long as it's not the exact same company, True. more or less. True. People can have an options and make choices of their own when it comes mm -hmm. to that. So it's not bad. True. True. Mm -hmm. And it's so about B2B. B. Yeah, exactly. And our That's businesses. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of, you know what I'm saying? One thing about it, I know that this this even if you have like one, two, or three people doing the same thing, everybody's different. You know, things are different, mm -hmm. differently presented. There are different um, resources and information that not everyone gives or has. So as long as it helps people, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, it's yeah, it's no, positive. Yeah, we're no fighting about who got this, who got that. If you're good, you're good. People gravitate towards you, they gravitate towards you. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to share the love, you share the love. No matter, you know what I'm saying? Because we all gonna win. Absolutely. At least we should. Yeah. <laughs> we should win. You know? Yeah. So, that's what it is. Now, How's your son doing? Oh, he's great. Awesome. Quiet. He's quiet. What's going on? Where, where, where's he? Yeah, at? I had to buy him. <laughs> All right, what'd you buy him now? I know you yeah, got, this, right? you got exactly. everything already. Like, what could you possibly he give didn't, him? He didn't get it yet. You'll see how tonight oh. goes. <laughs> Good idea. That's right. Yeah. Don't give him till now and then you mess up and you're like, well, yeah. I already got it. It don't matter. That's yeah. good. <laughs> I love my baby a lot. Mm. You know, poor baby is only child. So it's a but little You're going to have to do something about that. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you got maybe. a dog or something. <laughs> oh, Come on now, you know that's not the same. That is not the but same. It's a, it is a very good best friend. True. A very good companion. True, but has been known to keep many people company. True, but <laughs> they mortality is another issue. Oh yeah. There's always that downside. Yeah. I mean, you know, we had a dog for 16 years. Oh. 16 years. Beautiful dog and Part of the family, yeah. basically a part of the family. You know what I mean? And my, my grandson, 
Uh, I used to walk him when he was little and stuff. And then, you know, beautiful dog. And time came along. But then I was like, oh my God, you know, 16, 17 years, that's considered great yeah. for a lifetime of having a dog. Yeah. Really? It really is. Yeah. Yeah. I only had my dog for five years. <laughs> how, my poor baby. how old was he when you got him? She was maybe a year. But she got hit what? by a car. Oh, so, no. Yeah. Not, oh, and that's what? what my dad was saying. Like, he didn't oh. want, you know. And it, the day that it happened, it was all like, oh, we're going to get you another dog. We're going to get you another dog. And then that never happened. Because, like, who wants to go through that twice? <laughs> right. Or something, right. you know. You don't oh, want to do, do it. Well, you just ran out the back door or something like that. What happened? What um, happened? He, he ran into the street. I don't know. We used to, she used to always be in the backyard. But I don't know. This time, she ended up in the street. We don't know how. What kind, of, what kind of dog was it? A little, little, one of those little, um, it was like a poodle mixed with a um, shih tzu. So it was like little and furry. It was oh, awesome. wow. What was the name? Tika. What is it? Tika. Tika? Yeah. Tika, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tika. I got it when she was one. She already had that name. It was oh. actually Tika Pepsi. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Well. Yeah. Well, at least you, at least you can say you had a dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was yeah. awesome. It's nice. It was cool. Does he have any cousins and and like you know around his age? Any cousins or any... <sighs> like like some like that are too old? You know, like they're just teenagers, and then some that are too little. They're like oh, two and three. Okay. So it's like a little like uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's right there, like kind right. of by himself. But right, right, right. I don't know. I'm just happy that school is back open. Yeah. Because when school wasn't open, it was way worse. Yeah. Especially his age right now, he he needs to be around yeah. people yep. and socialize and stuff like that. You know, yeah. This is, people his growing. size. His yeah, height, that he could height. look at eye to eye. Exactly, <laughs> he could relate to. Yeah, you know, have the same kind of conversations. You know, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, the time is perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, it really was. I'm really happy, and hopefully it stays like that. You know, through the fall and in the winter. But I think it is because I think one of the things that they realize is like it's it's worse no matter what the situation is, having mm. them out of school mm -hmm. and in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because especially for the little ones, like the Zoom and stuff did not work for him. Really? Not at all. It was too much going on. You know, this child is like up and doing stuff and this child is doing something else. This child is just like staring. This yeah. child, is, you know, it's like, and then there's a lot of things going on, going on at right. one time, Yeah, you know, and then they get into like some movement. They were doing like times where they would do songs and then they mm -hmm. dancing. So mm -hmm. then people are doing, you know, they're, they're doing the, the wrong moves and, you oh, know, no. still, you know, mm -hmm. getting the attention of the teacher, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and stuff like that. And it, it's just when you're in that type of environment and you're just looking at all of it, you right. know, mm -hmm. it's really, yeah, it was too much for him. And like he did, he, he was just like, no, mommy. Like after a while, he was just like, no, I'd have to give him breaks, like two, three week breaks yeah. in between yeah. and then try to get him back in. So at yes. least he could have gone to kindergarten this year. Right. But it was rough. It was rough. It was too, it was way too much. And a lot of um, parents were, ha were having the same experience with the younger ones. But they were taking like, oh, they just didn't want to do it. They lost interest with school. And I'm like, no, I think it's just, you know, for a, a small child, a five-year-old that's, you know, it's like to watch all these different little boxes and yeah. all these things are happening in all the boxes. Yeah. This is like where to look, what to do. It's, exactly. You know, it's confusing. Yeah. And I think they realized that even though they did it, mm -hmm. they realized that it, it was not good for them. Mm -hmm. But there mm -hmm. were still some parents that chose to do virtual. I was surprised. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, it depends on sometimes the child, depends on the environment. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of yeah. things involved in and the attention span, especially if your child is very much of a, you know, uh, you know, they like to be mobile, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and engage, and engage, you know, the teacher, and, yeah, yeah. and then you, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's it's that's it's different for them. So, so you know, they got to try to, you know, discipline themselves to be that way. But if their nature is just to be, you know, which most kids is just to be be able to reach out and touch and talk yeah. and engage, it's a little challenging at times, but. Um, my my grandkids they they did actually pretty good they 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 enjoyed it 
Yeah. You know, they oh. made the best of it. Yeah, they made the best of it. They um they knew what they had to do. Plus, their mom was always there to make sure that they were doing what they were doing. So it, it worked out pretty good. That. That's cool. What yeah. grade? Seventh. And okay. and what was it? Yes, third, I think third. that's the okay. I think that's the age where the children liked it the most because <laughs> they didn't have to get up too early in the morning, travel exactly. to school. <laughs> exactly, all of that, all of that. That's yeah, right. they found the advantage for you. Yeah, but the thing about it is that the, the the time was still you know like from seven or eight o'clock or eight thirty to like three three o'clock. That's a lot of time to just sit yeah, there. Yeah, to be sitting in virtual front of, for yeah. anybody. Yeah, like anybody. I mean, you got to yeah. be really doing some exciting stuff to people get people's True. attention span, especially kids. Oh man, I, I, my hats off to all those kids who are able to go through all of that. Like, it's mm -hmm. not, it's not easy, especially transitioning from being in a classroom setting to being in a virtual setting. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, but you're right. I'm glad things are kind of sort of getting back to normal. Guess what? Sense, you know? They gave my son, you know, so now he, like he's, this is kindergarten. He's going to be six soon, but you know, that whole thing where you have to be, you know, five when kindergarten starts like after a certain time. So he mm -hmm. had to do two years of um, preschool, mm -hmm. but um, now it, kindergarten and they gave all the, the children in the class, in all the kindergarten classes, a Chromebook this oh, year, nice. like in all my whole district. Wow. Nice. At kindergarten, the kindergartens all the way up to eighth grade, mm. they all got Chromebooks. Yeah, so something. he's learning how to use the computer. He they they do like mostly reading mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exercises and stuff mm -hmm. on the computer. Isn't that something? Yeah, I'm like, man, we are in the future. They are, man. A five-year-old using a laptop in school. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm like, wow. That? And he comes home with it, and then we got to make sure it's charged for the next day and all that. Sometimes mm -hmm. they give little assignments on the on the laptop, and mm -hmm. you know they're mm -hmm. very good with it. I'm like, oh, wow. absolutely, they're very yeah. Very. They, you know, these young people coming up, they're gonna be totally different. From us. Totally different, new and improved. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is a wave of the future. You know, it's yeah. just, it's, it's things are just going fast and 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 and, and really on point with what they're learning right now and we have to be because you know what you have other cultures or other countries who are, are well well way ahead of us way ahead of us in technology you know what i'm saying i mean i'm just that's like, true and that's probably why they're doing that now to compete that's true that's right it's going to be yeah. very competitive out there for them so we, we got to get them on the game you know we have to you know? yeah so, they you know. they're doing a lot with robotics but they're not doing enough with like electrical stuff. Mm. Like if I knew electrical stuff, I would be making so many inventions. Mm. Is it like now I have to find an electrical engineer? Like everything takes me so much longer mm -hmm. because I didn't have a lot of exposure to certain things that could have mm -hmm. opened up my mind. Mm -hmm. But like the robotics is good, but definitely learning how to like make a clock, make, you know, like certain little things. That mm -hmm. I think are really able, you know, they're doing STEM, but I haven't seen anyone working with electronics, like really learning how like the fundamentals of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, there's this little show that my son has been um, picking up on on um, YouTube, and it's called Slick Slime Sam, and mm. it's a it's a a crafts kind of like channel. Mm -hmm. And they do all different kinds of crafts. They do like fun stuff with slime, make slime, and put skittles in it, like all different kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. But they do things like um, make an ATM and the ATM really works. Like you can put a card in it and what? money will come out. Yeah. Wow. They showed them how to, how to do it from start to finish. And I'm like, man, That's I wouldn't. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That you know, it and they're using you. soldering tools and soldering all this stuff. All that, and then we can make them freaking little rocket ships in the backyard. So yeah, you know. I mean, but that's really because if you notice, like all these little like five dollar headphones, these little five dollar chargers, those are young people in China making that in their sleep. Like mm. they make Bluetooth headphones, like it's nothing. They're making Bluetooth everything bluetooth out of fidget spinners like mm. there's all of these young people that just get creative and mm -hmm. they make stuff mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. sells over here like hotcakes 
Mm. Look at the little new fidgets, what they call a new fidget spinner, the poppets. Mm. Like these people are molding and making that like it's nothing. It's like that's you know, a very good on. point. Yeah. But one thing I also learned too is like um, I don't know if you have experienced this, but when you buy yourself like either a head headphone piece or a Bluetooth piece, if they're not good quality, they're not gonna work this stuff. For me, they stop working like every six to seven months. It's always something either yeah. with the wire or the Bluetooth, it's always something oh, yeah. that's not working. And then I find myself buying another one. So I'm like, okay, I understand the technology that you're using, but apparently something's not right. Either it's, either it's being refurbished or something, but I'm not getting my full quality of the um, pr product that I purchased. That's why sometimes when you buy those uh, beat headphones and stuff that costs like a lot of money, yeah. it's because they really, really put a lot of- Chinese people make that too. Yeah. They're making both of them. Yeah. Bo <laughs> And I was like, they make both of them. I'm like, I mean, because there needs to be something in the dollar store, right? Mm -hmm. That stuff is not made here. Sure. Right? None of that stuff is made here. Those little, like, you know, electronic little toys and stuff like that, they make mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah. Sorry, one moment. Mm -hmm. Baby, be careful, my book came out. Yeah, he found me, but I'll, I'll let him out and sleep being that we're, we're mm -hmm. still on the <laughs> mm -hmm. building stage. Mm -hmm. Since the Kathy's mm -hmm. going to come on at 9.30, so okay. well, I'm wondering if um, we should keep going. I don't know. People have been kind of um, knowing about the Black Fridays, so I think sometimes they just trickle in because they know they're mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like all those little, all those little gadgets you see, all those little things, they're the ones, they're the driving force behind it. Yeah. You know, then the yeah. then the big companies might pick it up and make, you know, and contract them to make it with better parts. Right. But right there on 28th Street, you can go into these little stores and get a lot of products that they're making in the back. <laughs> they're not even yeah. making it in china they're yeah. making it in the back course, they know what wires okay so we're being joined by someone welcome 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 to our black friday call i'm your host pajani flurry otherwise known as pj founder of brown eyes co inc and smart money university among other things this is the powerful pioneers black friday call we're joined by brother murray allen a powerful pioneer and our founder, Brother Rojo, we're allowing um, a few more people to trickle in. We were just kind of, you know, talking about different um, topics, about our young ones. So feel free to join the conversation. We're going to officially start soon. And that's my son um, being in the, the whole mix here. So I am going to... Um, maybe turn it over to Brother Rojo, if you're able, so I can settle Nathaniel in so that I can get into this. Okay. okay. Greetings. So, oh, okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, yes. Peace and love. Peace and love. Welcome, everyone. Greetings. Today is our Black Friday for tomorrow. We welcome everyone to our Black Friday virtual mall. Don't hesitate to invite, you know, friends and family. It's open to the public. You know, we do this every Friday, dedicating our time to not only provide quality products and services, powerful businesses, at the same time, provide these wonderful discounts and services for our people. So we give thanks for all of our Black Friday virtual vendors. Give thanks for all the supporters. At this time, as we're about to get started soon, we're giving everyone a few minutes to get on. In the meantime, um, feel free to check out our Blackstream platform. The virtual mall is officially open. The virtual mall is blackstream.live forward slash gifted. That's blackstream.live forward slash gifted. In each box, you have a wonderful gift. Each business within that box provide a wonderful um, gifts of services with love, giving thanks, 
and today we dedicate our time to edify and 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 and, and maximize in our business you know you know pioneer our motto with building strong families you know giving thanks to all family businesses salute building better communities it's very very vital that we build stronger and powerful communities giving thanks and of course, establishing powerful businesses. All the businesses that you're going to hear today are part of the um, wonderful dedication of specialized brothers and sisters who took time to study to show they self-approve within these sectors to not own, not only bring their resources for you to learn the knowledge, give you opportunity that you can earn amongst the brothers and sisters practicing what we call spiritual economics, and we can return it because the next generation, like our brother um, Murray and PJ was sharing earlier, we do this for our youth. We do this for the next generation. Yes, a lot of these workshops that you're going to hear in businesses, of course, everybody have a business. In these times, we need powerful businesses that will withstand the time, giving thanks. So, I'm going to go um, shout out some of the businesses within the Black Stream platform, and then I'll pass it um, back to our sister PJ, which she will um, give an opportunity to introduce herself. We definitely would like to open up the floor for those who's online to introduce themselves, their business, give a shout out before we go into some of the, 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 the main courses. And I say main courses because it's more than just a quinoa salad. Mm. You might get some fritters with some, you know, a dip on the side, you know. You might even get a nice little smoothie with that so you have it before the, the meal. And, of course, the dessert. Oh, man, y'all going to get a full-course meal today. So definitely get your pen, your papers. Tell a friend. Tell a family. Tell granny. Let granny know that the mall is open. Granny need to know the mall is open. She don't have to travel all the way to King's Plaza or the Galleria if you're in the Texas uh, yes, area. Sir, yes, sir. No. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> mall is officially open. And again, that website is blackstream.live forward slash gifted. Blackstream.live forward slash gifted. So before we um get started, Let's give a shout out to the virtual vendors. Okay, okay. Salute to all the virtual vendors. Where we at? Where we at? Um, you need to know what channels is up. We are live, y'all. Tell everyone we are live. Yes. So we have a couple of the wonderful channels here. We have um, salute to one of our first channels. I'm going on. Solar Rituals. Yes, Sister Rebel. Channel 13, Sacred Candles, for those who need that sacred candle, you know, building up your altar, you know, doing the things to be proactive with the, uh, your, your spiritual life. Yes, we salute to Solar Rituals. You can go to her channel, blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash Solar Rituals. That's Solar Rituals, and that's on channel... Channel 13, 13, 1, Knowledge 3, Understanding, and 4, Freedom and Culture. Ashe, Ashe. Um, the next channel we have is Channel 5. We live on Channel 5 with our brother Raymond. Uh-oh. Our, our trust specialist. If you need your wills, your trust, your insurance, you need. if you want to make money work for you, Okay, 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 okay. Definitely check out my brother Raymond channel. That's Raymond G dot live. Or you can go to Blackstream dot live forward slash expo forward slash Raymond Moore. That's Raymond M O O R E. Channel five. Powerful. He's doing some powerful things in the community, just like everyone else. We salute to y'all. What other channels we got just going, moving? Uh-oh, channel two, channel two. If you love what you hear in here and you love the work that Powerful Pioneers is doing in the community, go to channel two. You can donate something. That's blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash Powerful Pioneers TV. Yes, 
check out the channel, put a little love offering in the donation box. We do this for our people. We give thanks to all the work that the Pioneers is doing out there, mobilizing our elders, mobilizing our youths, and of course, can't forget our young adults and our parents. Giving thanks, salute, salute. Channel two, whatever channel we have. Channel six, channel six, we have AIU. AIU, that's blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash AIU. If you're interested in understanding who you are, culture, arts and culture, in relation to what we talk about spiritual economics, this is the platform to connect with when it comes to investment. And, you know, giving thanks to brothers like Murray and Ray, we give you those fundamentals of finances. So once you're ready to make those investment opportunity, you know the right people in the right place to go. So we give thanks to AIU on channel six. Also, we want to big up channel three, channel three, Brown Eyes Magazine, PJ in the building, Mom's Panor, woo, 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 woo. Mom's Panor at her best, publishers, publisher, sorry, public relations specialist, author, it, Mom, how much gigs do you have? <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Salute to PJ. Yeah, Give and thanks. thanks. Wow. Brown Eyes TV Hi. channel. Yes. Yes. That's channel three in the place to be. We give thanks mm -hmm. to Brown Eyes TV. Check it out. Check out the platform. Oh, I didn't even let, um, mention about the invention. Uh oh, <laughs> convertible, convertible, convertible panties. Salute, salute. Right. Channel three. Check it out. Also, we have on channel eight. MCE, salute to our brother Murray, credit restoration specialist extraordinaire. If you want to get your business credit right and your personal credit right, go to blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash MCE. Giving thanks. What other channels we have? Channel, channel 10. And stay tuned because Brother Murray is going to give a powerful presentation. You definitely don't want to miss this one. Channel 10, we have Sacred Rose. If you want to get your feet right, reflexologist style, you know, Channel 10, we salute to the reflexologists in the building. Salute. Um, channel 10, yes, Sacred Rose. That's blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash Sacred Rose. Ashe, Ashe. Who else we have? Channel 16. I was just building with Brother Pug the other day. You know, we actually drop in a, um, a wellness project. And plus, I, I actually have a, a project I'm launching to, a, a musical project. And I know my brother just dropped an awesome video. You can go on YouTube. You can go to Pug, um, Celebrate Life. Definitely an awesome video. My brother's doing things to empower the artists, the artists and the music um, empowerment department. You can go to channel 16, that's blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash P-U-G, pug. Channel nine, channel nine. What we have on channel nine, ancient aura jewelry. If you want to get your ancient comedic jewelry, go to channel nine. And you know, this is Black Friday, y'all. So, of course, Black Friday, we give that melanin discount. So, if you go and you purchase something, the code to put is PIONEER20. Again, PIONEER20. And, yes, you will get 20% off any and all the jewelry, ancient aura jewelry. We salute to our brother, um, Jason. And, again, that's blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash forward slash ancient aura, ancient aura. Also channel 27, Mixed Breed. Salute to my brother, Mixed Breed. DJ Selector Extraordinaire. Yes, yes, doing some powerful work. Brand Ambassador Specialist. <laughs> Giving thanks. Check out his platform, blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash mix 2x breed, mix breed. That's channel 27. Yes, we growing, y'all. We all growing. We all moving. Black stream. Yes, the virtual mall is officially open, y'all. 
tell a friend, tell a family to come on down because definitely the price is right. You know, mm-hmm. we got some wonderful products. You know, our sister PJ, she about to go in and show it to y'all, put it all in y'all virtual face. <laughs> you know, so thanks for all of the, all of the wonderful supporters. And again, tell your friend, tell your family, the virtual mall is open. You don't have to leave your house. Just click the button. Mm. Just come on the Zoom to here. Check out some of the streaming service. Go to blackstream.live forward slash gifted. You are the gift. We are the gift. We exchange in our gifts to each other. Channel 18, we salute Empress Blue, Sound Vibration Healer, you know, Earth Strong representative. Happy Earth Strong Empress Blue. Definitely check out her video. Check out her video, blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash Empress dash BLU. Check out her video. Go also on YouTube. You can go to YouTube. You can type in Empress Blue, B-L-U, and, and the type the name of the song is called Picture. Man, if anything, if you want to give her a, a thank you birthday, um, a Earth Strong appreciation, listen to her, uh, her song. Check out her video. Give her a view on, <laughs> on the social media. Press a like. <laughs> if, you, if you want to give her Earth, birthday, Earth Strong appreciation, press a like and a view. <laughs> Salute to Channel 18, Sound Vibration Healer. Giving thanks. Also, we have Channel 17, Breathe Clean, our brother D. Yes, you know, we in a season of purification, air element. It's the time to breathe easy. And with that, you definitely want the air purification to purify the nation. Check out our brother um, D on Channel 17. That's blackstream.live forward slash expo, forward slash breathe clean, C-L-E-E-N. That's breathe clean. Definitely, this device right here, you can have it in your home. You can have it portable in your car if you're traveling. You don't have to be having a mask in the vehicle by yourself. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. another story. So salute to our crystal specialist, Sister Hope on Channel 15. You know, salute to Unc Rising Sun. He said, if you don't have your pistol, better have your crystal. So we give thanks for having our crystal stones and jewels. Yes, check out Sister Sister Hope on blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash hope Ra stones. That's H-O-P-E-E, Ra stones. Hope Ra stones. Channel 15, Sister Empress, I mean, Sister um, Hope, I, I, I recommend everyone getting a, a crystal in their home, getting some type of stone. There's so many of them out there. Find out which one is for you and get it immediately. Quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Giving thanks. Also, we want to salute our young entrepreneur, our brother, you know, Q, um, Channel 23, definitely with the urban garments. If you need your clothing, Yes, and even if you want to get your clothing design, we have someone who specializes in it within the cipher. Check out his channel, blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash politically urban. That's again, politically urban. Salute to our brother Q, channel 23. Also, we want to give a shout out to channel 21, our brother Duke. Yes, our traveling specialist. Be ready to travel you know, do things locally, globally. That's the brother to connect with. Salute to our sister Victoria too, our, our traveling specialist. You know, our brother Duke is doing some wonderful things. Check him out on channel 21, blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash TWNF. That's TWNF. Check out um, his wonderful platform if you need to travel someplace get out of the um, cold for the winter, definitely follow up with my brother. Channel 22, Channel 22, holistic representative. Yes, if you need someone to help you, you know, help granny, anybody who's going through, especially the the needy, the disabled, the, the impaired, definitely we have our sister who's been doing a wonderful job traveling to different homes, places to help our people. Check her out on channel 22, that's blackstream.live, forward slash expo, forward slash C, 
Sun Life Holistic. That's Sun Life Holistic on Channel 22. Yes, also Street Talk Daily. Salute to Street Talk Daily. Um, you can go to blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash street talk daily. Blog representative, our sister in Houston doing some work. If you would like to see the, the video we did, we did a powerful interview where we was talking about relationship and the importance of building powerful relationships, especially in this time. Salute to our sister. Also, she interviewed um, the sister from The Matrix. She interviewed a couple of people on her platform. So stay tuned. We may have her on one of these Black Friday special sessions where she will be highlighting some of her video herself and her journey, giving thanks. Lastly, we have Groove Control. If you want to get down on it, come on, come on, get down on it. Go to Channel One. <laughs> groove Control. That's Blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash Groove Control. Definitely check out our brother. He's um, from Thursday to, to, to Saturday, Sunday, he's on from about 7 to 11, playing some good, powerful, historical music. Of course, he go into some new stuff, but if you want to know about history and music, go to Groove Control. So with that being said, check out the Blackstream platform. We are live. We will be on from 7 to 11. The virtual mall will be open. Definitely tell a family, tell a friend. Check us out, blackstream.live forward slash expo. No, blackstream.live forward slash gifted. Again, that's blackstream.live forward slash gifted. We dedicate this time and come, come live on the session right here so you can invite your people so they can hear some of these wonderful specialized businesses as we also mobilize simultaneously on our Blackstream platform. Mr. PJ, the floor is yours. Yes, yes, Brother Rojo. Thank you for that amazing presentation. Very um, comprehensive about uh, Powerful Pioneers, Black Stream, and the Black Streamers of the Powerful Pioneers um, Powerhouse. So it's very exciting that we could come together like this and really, you know, put each of our personalities and our businesses and our information on this exclusive platform where we know that other people are really gonna appreciate it, you know, really take the time to support us, um, not just only, you know, supporting our businesses, but supporting us individually. I've gotten so much support from the Black Stream family and also the Pioneer family. So I'm very grateful. Um, so if you have not gotten your Black Stream channel yet, I recommend it. Um, I stream all of my content on Blackstream. So that's my, and I, you know, I'll get more into what I do here. So on the publishing side, um, my two magazines, Brown Eyes Magazine and Behind the Scenes Magazine host live events in the community, live entertainment events. Behind the Scenes Magazine is an entertainment publication um, covering all genres of entertainment. So we do a showcase called Behind the Beat, where it, it's a virtual showcase on Blackstream.live. Um, the channel again is Blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash Brown Eyes TV. Um, my host company, our um, parent company, Brown Eyes Co. Inc. So Brown Eyes TV showcases all the things that happen within um, the Brown Eyes network. So Brown Eyes TV, which is also channel three. Me if I'm, <laughs> I believe it's channel three. Um, but yeah, you can go through on the, um, the expo page. Um, I should be either three or four, but I'm, I, I do believe it is channel three, right after Pioneers. So um, we also do a, a powerful um, event with Brown Eyes Magazine uh, the holistic health and positive entertainment publication um, that I first started in 2007, way, way, way back when um, the health movement was really um, coming into fruition in terms of it being household names 
um, yoga and Pilates and alkaline water. You know, we've come a long way, but right at the, the um, turn of, um, the, of um, like events, you know, the early 2000s, 2010, it was right when, you know, health was like getting to be the it thing. And we launched Brown Eyes. And of course we had an amazing response and we've been doing the Soul Series since then. Um, it's how we launched. And so we still continue the, the tradition of bringing a live event. Hey, sorry if there's any background noise here, guys. I'll address it. But um, the, the Soul Series really connected us to the community members. Um, we've been doing the showcase again um, since 2007. And we've really been able to connect positive artists to community members and have discussions, um, connect around um, healthy food. But the Rojo has been a part of the event as far as catering healthy food and tonics for the event. We always bring those elements together, just like in the magazine, holistic health and positive entertainment and the community. And so um, we've been keeping the tradition going with the, a new series, Uptown Soul. And um, actually, it, it's kind of new, but kind of not. We, we, right when the pandemic started and we had to stop doing events altogether, um, early last year, it had already been a, a little over a year um, that we had brought the showcase back after a little hiatus. And so um, it's back again. And um, again, we are uptown. So Uptown Soul um, right now is being held every other month. And so those two events are streamed exclusively onto Blackstream.live. You will not find it anywhere else. If you are looking to you know, stream the events, we may go live on our IG page for one or two minutes, but the full entire show live is available on Blackstream only. So, um, I encourage people to get into the groove, join the Telegram group if you haven't already, which will let you know when each Black streamer goes live so you don't miss anything. Um, definitely plug into that and you'll know when I'm live, when you can see live music, beautiful performances, amazing discussions, um, healthy practices. Soon, um, coming up on the 17th, we'll be doing a health, um, excuse me, a healing hangout um, where we'll be bringing elements of health together, health and wellness, um, and people can just come and learn about it, hang out, eat some great food, and connect around these principles. So it's going to be amazing. It's going to be in Brooklyn. You're going to be able to get hands-on healing services, reflexology, cupping, massage, and you'll also, again, be able to just hang out with people like Brother Rojo, the alkaline vegan chef, <laughs> you'll get to kind of chill with him and ask him questions and, you know, discuss um, his amazing book with the um, different recipes for smoothies, alkaline smoothies. You'll get to have discussions with other pioneers as well that are in health and wellness. I'll, I'll be there, obviously, as your host for the evening. It's going to be amazing and healthy. You're going to walk out of there definitely way more, you know, way fortified than when you came in. These are the times where we need to be going to places to heal ourselves. Like just as much as we want to go out and go to restaurants and, you know, some people, it's not my thing, but you know, like going to movies and things like that. I mean, for me, a good time is, you know, roller skating. Like I'm into roller skating and things like that. Um, I have a lot of energy, so I tend to like, like to do like high impact things when I'm, you know, quote unquote, you know, want to relax and do something fun. So, you know, I like to do stuff like that, but although that is a good, you know, way to build the immune system, physical activity, a lot of people want to go out and hang out and be in a small space with no air circulating, you know, but in this event, we'll be outside, we'll have an indoor section, an outdoor section, we'll be healing you from the moment you walk in, you'll get tonics, you'll get a, a shot of breath of life, you will eat amazing alkaline food from um, various pioneer um, I want to say 
um, chef specialists, <laughs> alkaline chef specialists, you know, that are um, in and around uh, the Powerful Pioneer Network. So it is really going to be an amazing event. More information is going to be shared about it, but it's going to take place October 17th. October 17th in Brooklyn. Stay tuned for details. We're gonna start around 3 p.m. in the afternoon and um, the main portion will go to about 8 p.m. But after that, we'll get into some, you know, um, some after party vibes, all right? So yes, it's gonna be a DJ, music, all that great stuff. So yeah, that's the Healing Hangout. Definitely come and hang out with us, all right? Like I mentioned, you're going to walk out of there feeling so amazing, fortified, um, just having so much knowledge and things to bring back home to your family and your friends, all right? So definitely stay tuned for more information about that. Um, the next event that we have after that is the Health and Wealth Fair, um, virtually as well, um, the 19th, two sessions, 11 to 2. And then from eight to about 10 p.m., we'll have a later on, you know, a later session. Um, and then um, after that, we have the Behind the Beat one year anniversary. We started this showcase in the pandemic, y'all. Like literally, you know, we said we can't, you know, get everyone out, but we have to find a way to support these artists throughout this time, provide a outlet. That is what I do. Not only do I publish, but I also am very clear that my platform serves a purpose. And um, one of those purposes are to, um, one of the purposes is to, <laughs> is to, because I am a publisher, right? I want to get this, I want to get this English thing right. Um, one of the purposes is to support artists. And <clears throat> as a platform that does so, we want to make sure that the artists are being able to make sales, continue to make sales, continue to do what they love, express themselves, um, promote themselves, work on their craft. So we we um, started the Behind the Beat virtual showcase, again, exclusively on Blackstream.live. So we just have a lot of amazing things going on. Giving thanks, Sister PJ. Salute. And definitely, again, check out Sister PJ platform, blackstream.live forward slash expo forward slash brown eyes TV. That's brown eyes with a Z TV. Definitely check her out. She has so much wonderful things that she offers in the community. And when you join Pioneers, you get these wonderful resources not only at a wonderful discount that we naturally provide on a Black Friday and naturally, but now you surround it with all these wonderful resources. You know, it's like going, it's like a you going to Toys R Us, just going in there, just dancing around like, oh man, it's beautiful. We give thanks. So again, salute to you, Sister PJ, Mom's Panor. Um, we're going to keep this the flow going here. And uh, what I would do is um, I will open the floor um, a little later after the call, like a little later after our session, because we definitely want to um, get some of our representatives um, on to share their information. And of course, you know, we got some powerhouse today. So definitely stay tuned. Again, tell a friend, tell a family. We are live. We are live now. The virtual mall is open. And right now, you know, one of Pioneer model is our health is our wealth. True health is wealth and true wealth is health. And with that being said, our wealth, one of our many wealth builders, because, you know, we have many financial specialists within our cipher, giving thanks. And one of our guru, you know, we call the pioneer guru, our brother Murray, you know, giving thanks. Harlem deserved the credit. You know, Houston deserved the credit. My brother out here traveling around, you know, waking people up, letting them know they deserve the credit. Oh, Orlando, Orlando, you deserve the credit. No, 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 you deserve the credit. No, I just, we deserve the credit. Understanding the fundamental of credit from a basic standpoint. So now when we use it personally, privately, and publicly, we understand those dynamics. And when, and when we now birth what we call these 
entities, right? We know how to govern them and, and not only govern them optimally, we know how to provide that credit. You know, we store credit with on our with our business credit and our personal. So yes, it gets deep. And with that being said, the the, the we, we have to acknowledge the individual behind all that knowledge. Because again, this knowledge has been passed down for years. And, you know, we honor our elders for our days to be longer and stronger. Not everybody was able to hang out with the elders and learn and humble themselves. So Murray being one who learned among those elders and got some of the sacred knowledge, he, he learned the knowledge and he earned from it. And now he's able to return it to y'all. So without any further ado, get your pen, get your paper out. Harlem deserved the credit. Murray Allen. The floor is yours, Brother Murray. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe, Ashe. Peace and blessings, brother. Can you hear me? I want to make sure we're, I'm being heard loud and clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you and the, the uh, edification that you give me and all the rest of our powerful pioneer family. Uh, one thing I just want to mention is what Sister PJ, she said something to me that's really raised one of my eyebrows and she says she likes to roller skate. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, me too. Me too, PJ. I used to love roller skating. Um, haven't been on the skates for quite a while. Yeah. But one okay. thing I got to, listen, one thing I want, you, I want you to do something for me, okay? Yeah. First of all, now you heard that record called Skate by Bruno Mars, right? Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get a chance, please play that video. Just play it for us, all right? Just for skating, skating purposes, you know? Because when I saw that video, I was like, oh, yes, yes, the brother is finally bringing it back, you know? So all in fun, all in love, you know what I mean? Skate life. Appreciate you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know most people can relate to the time when we used to skate. I don't care how younger you were or mid-age, whatever the case may be, skating is the deal. I mean, I remember Skate Key and, oh, man, let's, let, me, let me just, I digress. Let me, let me just... <laughs> Leave that alone, but if you get a chance, play that video for us. Yes, we'll take a look and have a little fun with it. Yeah, that's going to be our <laughs> outro, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. But getting back to the, uh, the reality of credit, you know, one thing about credit that I have always acknowledged and realized that credit is a mindset. It's a behavior. And, you know, it's also a worldwide uh, situation. So it, does, it doesn't just stop in Harlem. It doesn't, you know, stop in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Long Island, New Jersey, you know, Westchester. No, it's, this is worldwide, okay? Credit is a worldwide issue. As a matter of fact, our country, the United States of America, is in debt for trillions and trillions of dollars because what? Because they had credit on things that they purchased, okay? So credit has always been something that we all have had to deal with as we got older. And again, credit is a behavior. And so if you've ever grown up and like myself, uh, as growing up and going to college and such, I, I didn't know much about credit. I really, honestly, I didn't care about credit. All I knew is that, look, you give me a credit card and I can buy stuff with it. And like, I don't have to pay until later. I'm like, cool, that's, a, that's an awesome deal. I can go with that. And then as time goes on, you know, and you don't pay what you owe and they're calling you up and, and, and I'm getting an attitude because they're bothering me because I borrowed money for them and I'm not ready to pay them back. So it's just the audacity, the mitigated gall to have that type of an attitude towards uh, borrowing something from someone or some entity and not paying them back because of arrogance. And there is a difference, there's a dichotomy between arrogance and the fact that you simply don't have it. That's the reality. So we know that that's part of life. Sometimes people get sick, sometimes people who are um, uh, just not ill-informed about how credit works, sometimes people lose their jobs. So there is a place and space for that. But again, I'm talking about the, 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 the audacity and the, the arrogance and the attitude of borrowing from someone and not paying them back. That's a behavioral attitude and problem. In the situation that I frankly, that's the kind of attitude that I had, okay, in the past. And when you're young, you know, you, you become a little bit, uh, you know, beside yourself. And so therefore you see things in a different level. So now as we get older, uh, we want to make sure that we're responsible as adults as we are. 
And we also want to make sure that if, in fact, we do get into the quagmire of bad credit and we cannot pay the creditors or the lenders, uh, I, I implore you to reach out to them, call them, tell them your situation, tell them to give you some more time, tell them if you could just waive the interest rates for now, tell them that you had a personal situation, let them know that you know you mean well, okay, you're well-intended, but something came up and at this point in time, I can't pay as much or as consistently as possible. I can guarantee you this, once you communicate with them, once you communicate with your creditor and lenders, they will give you an opportunity to explain yourself and they will give you an opportunity to either have a forbearance or they may even lower the interest rates for that moment of time, or they will give you some, uh, maybe a lower amount of premium that you have to pay on your car. But the key thing is you must communicate, okay? You must communicate with them because if you don't, they're gonna assume that you just, you, it's like you just don't care. Now imagine this. And this is actually my book. There's a there's a story that talks about a gentleman by the name of Lion Daly. Yes, Lion Daly. He had the audacity to go around town and borrow money from different people, uh, you know, in in his uh, community. And so the word got out that Lion is dead beat. That brother, he didn't pay me back because he said he would. He owed me money. Then community community also heard about Lion Daly and his. Uh, lying medacity habits and the word got out so that when lying really needed the money, no one was going to give him anything. Okay, so that's almost similar. It's a narrative that's similar to the uh, creditors and lenders. If in fact you do not pay them back or if in fact you are um, not paying them back as terms or the agreement, what's going to happen? It's going to put, be put on your credit report. That's their way of sort of like getting back at you, you know? as opposed to beating you up like they did with Lion Daily once they caught him, taking the money. Um, but they hurt you in your pocket. They hurt you in the area where the credit reporting agencies will report your credit habits um, to all the creditors and lenders. Okay, so once the word is out, uh, what's gonna happen is that your credit score is gonna plummet, okay? You're not gonna have the, the optional opportunities to be able to get uh, credit, whether it's trying to get a car, whether they're trying to get a credit card, a mortgage. And in some instances, ladies and gentlemen, in some instances, even job opportunities are a contingency when it comes to you, uh, you know, dealing with your credit score, okay? So, and the other caveat is the fact that you're gonna be spending hundreds, even thousands of dollars out of pocket unnecessarily. Why? Simply because your credit score is below the average score. Now, the national average is 700, okay? 700 is considered very good. The interest rates most of the time on a credit card is, is very low. And also in the mortgage industry, uh, it's very low. So the higher your credit score, the lower the interest rates that you have to pay. So you wanna be able to make sure that you kind of chip away whatever you owe uh, as time goes on and remember, pay up everything that you possibly can by the end of the month. If you can't do it now, work at it. Just try to work at it as soon, as quickly as possible. Pay more than they require you to do on a premium basis, monthly basis. You know, when you have that monthly fee that they ask you to pay, okay? Try to pay more than usual. Why? Because it'll help you to get closer to, to not having to uh, pay anymore and your interest rates are gonna be lower. And that's one of the beautiful things about the 2009 Credit Reporting Act that uh, Brother uh, Barack Obama put in place uh, in 2009 in May. The legislation that he put in place, I think is one of the most uh, important aspects of financial um, uh, parameters that we have is because one of the laws states that the uh, credit reporting agencies and the statements that you get from the credit uh, companies, the credit uh, statements that you get when you look at it, it's more transparent now. You're actually able to see how much you owe, how much it would cost you to continuously pay that premium on a monthly basis for the next three or four years, okay, including interest rates, okay, it gives you a, a, a real gauge of how much money you're going to be spending out of pocket if you don't 
pay up the balance by the end of the month. And some cases, people are going to have to pay an interest rate anywhere from fifteen hundred, sometimes two thousand dollars, to pay back what they owe in a five-year span of time. So the transparency right now is really crystal clear. Look at your statement; it really helps you to understand a little bit better, and it also lets you know that uh, no longer do the credit card statements come to you late, where you only have like ten or five days to pay them. Uh, what you owe, uh, because sometimes that's what happens with people. They go on vacation, they get their, uh, their credit statements, and it looks as if they were supposed to um, pay it uh, a le- in a timely manner, like five or 10 days, because they send it out late, and then now they expect you to pay it within that time. Well, with 2009 Credit Reporting Act, what they have done is they have given you an additional 20 days to let you know uh, that your payment is coming up. So there are a lot of things that are very important that I think should be noted. One thing I'm excited to talk about also is the fact that most recently I was uh, asked to do a presentation on business credit uh, on 136th Street at a very nice restaurant in Amsterdam Avenue. I believe it's called Harlem Suites Restaurant. And um, a very, very good presentation. It was um, a nice restaurant. And I was excited about it because of the fact that the minute I asked people if they knew about credit or how credit worked in a business perspective, and, and some of them were like, no, I don't know what it's about. I don't know if it's a paid ex I don't know if it's a brass I got excited because I like, this is great. I love when people are here to understand about credit, but are honest enough, honest enough to know that they don't know everything about it, but they're willing to know. And that's what gets me excited. That's why I'm a credit crusader. I've always been a credit crusader because I think it is very important that we try to educate, restorate, and also be able to try to help all those who are in the quagmire of bad credit. Because even though that you are in bad credit situation, I believe in credit redemption. I really believe that everyone has an opportunity and everyone has the ability to get back on the right track, or as the Godfather of Soul would say, get on the good foot, okay, on good credit. So they can be able to position you to what? To get better interest rates on your uh, your services and your products that you have, that you're purchasing. Um, Also be able to uh, maybe get a car, uh, be able to uh, travel at a low interest rate, or even be able to have um, a car, you know, a car, playing less interest rates on your credit card and a car. And so that's what you wanna do. See, when you're in business, it's very important to be able to position yourself where you can get a net 30. And a net 30 is basically uh, having a vendor give you 30 days to pay back what you owe from their supplies, okay? Now, it's a beautiful thing because they're giving you the product and the services to be able to sell and generate income. And all they ask you to do is pay them back within a 30 day period. I think that's a great deal. You know, it allows you to be able to let them know that you're credible and you're responsible because this is what credit is all about. You know, the word credit really means faith and belief. Okay, the creditors and lenders have faith in you and belief in you that you will pay them back on terms. Now, we did mention that life does happen and you know, things happen like the pandemic, of course, and people are losing their jobs and things of that nature. And they understand that most businesses and lenders, they understand that. So you just have to talk to them and let them know your situation. And more than likely, they work with you. You know, there's an old saying, they say that a closed mouth never gets fed. And that's so true. And so you got to really talk and speak to it. Um, I'm excited about my next book that is coming out. I mean, this, this book is going to be really, really, really good. Um, there's a lot of things that I really thought about and, and meditated on and, and really, um, really got inside of myself to understand what can we do? How can we approach individuals, not in a judgmental way, which I'm, I'm not really a judgmental. This is a no, no judgment free zone here. Okay. Especially with the powerful pioneers. We don't judge anybody. You know, all we want to do is be able to help educate you and empower you. Okay, that's what we do. And that's what we stand for as a collective. So I thought to myself, I said, what else can I really do to empower, of course, our people 
first because I think we need it the most, okay? And also anyone else who are interested in learning how credit works. Well, the first we have to do is we have to really get inside of ourselves on a spiritual perspective. We have to start using the, 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 the power of visualization. And I'm not trying to piece to cry because I know most, I would say all powerful pioneer members are extremely spiritual and they have a very beautiful spiritual base and foundation. Uh, which is what makes things so beautiful being a powerful pioneer member. We're all incongruent. We are God-fearing individuals. So rather than have that, you know, that, that you should do this, you should do that, you should do this, you should do that, with the new book that's coming out, it's going to really be able to get a little more into the psychological aspect of, of credit. It's going to get into spiritual aspect of credit. It's going to get into the uh, behavioral mindset of credit. And we're gonna also talk about something called dopamine. And dopamine is, you know, is a neuro neurological transmitter of that good feeling. You know, that's why oftentimes, because we are a purchasing power, uh, powerhouse of a culture, uh, going into $1.4 trillion in buying power, most often than not, this is just a percentage, there's a certain percentage of us that purchase items to feel good. It's a void that's being filled in our subconscious or consciousness that we wanna fill by purchasing. I mean, doesn't it feel good to purchase things that you want or that you need, or even some things that you don't need, you know? It's a great feeling to be able to have it and really enjoy it. And my thing is this, we do deserve the credit and we deserve the good things in life that we have. But what we want to do is be able to position ourselves where we can actually afford it and spend it freely, freely with no restrictions, with no subconscious feelings of being chained and locked to the fact that we cannot be able to uh, make those payments back on time. Or the attitude of, well, God damn it, I've been working so hard. I've been doing a lot. I'm going to take a trip and I don't care. I'm going to max out my credit card because this is the only time I'm gonna be able to utilize it. And then you come back and you're back again in the quagmire of background. So we want people to think smarter and be more economically inclined. That's why I love being a part of the Smart Money uh, University because that is what our, uh, meant, that's, that is what our, our calling is, okay? That's our, our mantra, okay, if you will. That is our mantra. We wanna be able to position people to, to spend freely and spend happily without thinking about the consequences thereof. So that is something that uh, I, as a credit crusader, want to really be able to empower uh, moving forward as a community. Because again, sometimes the issues that we have are the fact that we spend a lot, okay? We spend a lot, but when we spend, isn't it interesting to know that even though we have a great purchasing power, uh, we have the worst credit? Now, how does that work? Hmm. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, as I mentioned before, um, thinking about, uh, uh, you know, one of the aspects of dopamine, as I mentioned before, it's a neuro neurological transmitter, that good feeling. Uh, we're going to get into that in the new book, okay? We're going to really dig inside of psychology and the emotional uh, attachments that uh, goes along with spending, uh, of maxing out our cards, and of that, that mindset. And this is not everyone, ladies and gentlemen, this is for those who are uh, in a position where they, they, they don't know what to do or they continuously see themselves back in those habitual habits of, 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 of bad credit. Those are the ones we want to reconstruct and create that behavioral positive mindset because it happens to all of us, okay? It does happen to all of us. And so, again, it's a non-judgment zone and we want to be able to get into psychology of it. We want to get to the spirituality of it. Because if we can re, re, be able to gauge and be able to tweak and reconfigure our mindset and our spiritual aspect of who we are and what we are supposed to be, which of course is kings and queens. And from what I know, most kings and queens are royal and they have gold and riches and wealth, okay? Not only of spirituality, but also in the world of materialism. So we wanna get back to that and of course, you can't have none of that. You can't have none of that. And I'll say it one more time, you cannot have none of that without good health. So health is always paramount. 
health is always the most important aspect of our lives, taking care of our temple uh, so that we can be able to what? Think better, feel better, uh, connect with you know, our God, our spirituality, so we can be able to move as a force uh, to the land of, of good and plenty, okay? So I implore those who are on the call right now, please, 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 I implore you, get involved in business credit. I'm telling you, get involved with business credit. There's only 10% of the community business entrepreneurs that know about business credit. It is a opportunity where you cannot allow yourself to be caught up in the web of personal liability issues, personal debt, okay? This is what all the rich folks do, okay? They never mix their business with personal or their personal with business. They never, ever do that. And that's what I was telling the folks up uh, uptown at the um, Hall of One Stop, which is actually a tourism uh, organization, but they have connections with a lot of other small businesses in the community. So they asked me to come up there and share some information about business credit. And I, I'm gonna tell you guys, eyebrows were raised, questions, hands were up. I mean, they, they absolutely were clueless about business credit. Now, these are people who own restaurants, who own uh, um, different respective uh, businesses. And when I told them, listen, you pay your invoice when it comes in. When you get your supplies, whether it's potatoes or, or whatever your supplies are, and your supplier or your vendor, your supplier comes in there and give you your items and products and you pay them cash, right? They give you the invoice, you give, pay you cash, and then they're out. And you've been doing this for years and years and years. And I said, well, look, you know what? Why don't you ask them if they could report your payment habits, your on-time payment habits to Dun & Bradstreet? And I'm like, huh? Dun & Bradstreet? He said, yeah, Dun & Bradstreet is the leading business credit agency in the world. Okay, they started out in Merchandise Agency in Brooklyn in 1849. Okay, and why is that important? Because if they can report your payment habits to Dun & Bradstreet, Dun & Bradstreet will give you a, a Paydex score. And a Paydex score is similar to a personal credit score, you know, 300 850. Well, with business credit, you have a credit scoring system that goes from one to 100. 80 being prompt. What does prompt mean? That means that if you had a net 30, which the vendor creditor gives you 30 days to pay them back, you have a net 30, if you pay within 30 days, that's an 80 point score, which is good because that's what the lenders and creditors look at your Dun & Bradstreet profile to see if you're making your payments on time. Because you know what? With Dun & Bradstreet and these credit reporting agencies, business credit reporting agencies, they don't deal with all the other five entities of credit. Remember with basic credit, Experian XFF Insurance Union, they'll deal with what? 35% has to do what? Payment history. 30% has to do what? Utilization or your balance, right? Paying it on time or utilizing less than 30%. 15% has to do with what? The longevity of credit history. 10% has to do with what? mixed credit and the other 10% has to do with uh, inquiries. When you're dealing with business credit, it strictly, strictly, strictly solely has to do with you being deletory and making your payments on time to your suppliers. That's all it is. It's just that one key factor, okay? And so these are the type of things that uh, I think is extremely important to know. Guys, you know, as you know, I do have a training course on that. Um, I implore you, consider taking the, 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 the course Remember, we're going to test you at the end to make sure you pass it and we give you a certificate of completion. So overall, remember, and particularly, business credit is a nationwide issue. Personal credit is a nationwide issue. And it starts when we're young. When I was younger, I didn't know anything about credit. I became a type of person who didn't care about credit. I became a person who didn't give a damn if they asked me that I owe, if I owe the money to pay them back, I was like, no, because you knew I wasn't working. You knew that I didn't have a job and you gave me a credit card. So shame on you. 
Imagine the audacity, right? The arrogance, okay? But when you're younger, you don't know any better. But right now is a time when we need to teach our young folks about credit. Don't get credit if you can't afford to have credit, okay? Don't get misled by all these advertisements and all these, you know, these, 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 these credit card companies, these mortgage companies, these job, you know, not job, these um, um, car dealerships. Don't get caught up in all that. Position yourself accordingly, be systematic, get your plan of action in place. And then why? So that you make sure that your credit score is so much favorable that now they're coming to you and you are king or queen and you have the determination whether or not you want to opt out or opt in in the, in the interest rates that they're providing for you. But remember, the higher the credit score, the lower the interest rate. So sometimes credit is an emotional issue. So that is something that we have to have in harness on as a culture. And I know we can do it. And that's why we're here right now with the Power Finding Organization, along with Blackstream.live as a collective, and amongst all the other beautifully strong, spiritually strong brothers and sisters on this call to know that not only going to make a difference in your life, but you'll be able to make a difference in other people's lives. So that's my ditty for the night, guys. God bless. Reach out to me at 1 888 317 1702. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Back to you, sister. Given thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Given thanks, brother. Wonderful I presentation. Yeah, I have um, some comments and questions too, but go ahead, um, Brother Rahul. I'll go after. Given thanks, Brother Murray. I know one of the things that we share in Pioneers is our health is our wealth. One of the topic discussion I was sharing was the science of negative hydrogen ions and positive hydrogen ions. And when we look at that, that science and health, it, it's, it, it have a correlation when it comes to credit and, and wealth building too. What is your perspective on that in relation to the alkaline pH chart? Well, brother, you know, you just hit it right on the head. There's a correlation. So interesting enough about uh, credit and, you know, <laughs> alkalinity. Uh, and I think we have spoken about it before and some other dynamics that have to do with one and the other. Well, you know how we talk about a 700 credit score is considered to be a good score. It's really a primary score that most people should strive for because it allows for more options and opportunities and you have a tendency to, to be a little bit more respected. And you know what? What I found, brother, is that when people hit that 700 score, their energy level is different. And they, they got more swag. I'm telling you, their swagger is a little different. The way they walk, the way they go into a store, or the way the fact that they go to a bank, you know, the swag is different. That, that, seven, you know, that 700 score something that really makes a difference in their lives and they strive to get at least a 700 and i you know sometimes they they want to go to like 800 840 850 i'm like why you know what i'm saying you don't have to go up to 800 or 840 or 850 once you've hit a certain level of credit you're pretty much good but nationally speaking i'm telling you 700 credit score is a swagger score people have more positive energy, they feel more confident in what they do, and, and, and the belief system is a lot higher than it normally is. And so we, 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 we kind of aching that to the dichotomy of having a uh, alkaline, alkalinity of, um, I believe it is seven, what is it, uh, se what was it, what was it, seven, 70, 7.0 level, yeah. And so, um that I believe that that is the part where you know that your body is alkaline uh, positively because you know with that score there's less um, there's less uh, what do you call it uh, there are less um, disease that is in the body there's less um, um, what am I looking for uh, I don't want to say I don't want to say fat but there's there's a content within the system which uh, does not grow and it doesn't fight disease as much if it's a lower alkalinity. It opens up the door to portholes, a lot of diseases and a lot of um, sicknesses in the body. So you have to fortify it to that level 
because once you do that, you will feel a difference. You will certainly feel a difference in your attitude and your body makeup, uh, the way that you are articulating and your energy just rises to another level. So the high, the alkalinity, uh, primarily the seven, I think it's a 7.0 uh, percentage is what you're looking for. I mean, you can certainly go higher than that, but there's, there's also, again, there's also a part where you don't wanna go too high. You wanna keep it nice and even, there's an even flow so that you can be able to, um, you know, handle, uh, uh your diet properly and you know the role of alkalinity is certainly something that is very important as a matter of fact there is a woman i know it's a man excuse me there's a man who actually won the nobel prize why because he showed and he did experiences on how the body does not uh the body cannot let me just put it this way with the alkalinity in your body, if you have the proper amount of pH in your body, disease cannot uh, live in the body at the same time. It just cannot. It just it just won't work. So, yeah, brother, you you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And there are other things that we correlate, you know, uh, within ourselves and dealing with the. Um, the body and the, the credit scoring system is, is, is a weird thing, man. I'm telling you, especially when you get the five slices of, of uh, uh, credit, you know, and you're dealing with the five uh, entities of the human body, whether it's the etheric body, whether it's the, the, the you know, the, the, the mental body, you know, you can, you can break that into five entities as well. So there is definitely a correlation between the two, how the numbers work. The numbers definitely reflect each other in some way shape or form brother so you know one day we're going to sit down we're going to write a book about the, <laughs> the correlation between the, the body and the credit <laughs> and i i guarantee you it's going to be something that uh is going to definitely take people to a whole nother level man because it's, it's, it's a spiritual thing and uh we want to get people there in any way shape or form that we can possibly do it brother Yes, brother, and I think um, we can, yes, I say, and I think okay. we can bring it also to the spiritual, as you mentioned, not only the body, um, the spiritual aspects um, of us in terms of, um, like you said, not having that um, kind of um, audacity or um, just non-wisdom to understand that someone has lent you money. So we talk about spiritual economics among our people, how we're relating to ourselves. So even um, it could be a black owned bank or a, um, a community bank where you know members of the community have come together and you don't do the right thing with them. Um, spiritually, if you borrow something and you make you fill out a contract, you know, even verbal, because your word is bond as well, you want to live up to that. You know, um, there's a lot of spiritual laws. Um, if you look at certain scriptures um, throughout time, throughout different cultures, in particular, the, the um, Israelite culture, there's 400, more than 400 laws of Yahweh. It's not just stopped at the um, 10 commandments. And a lot of the laws have to deal with how you do business. And of course, so later on, Jewish communities adopted this, and you can see how well it's worked for them. You know, you know, um, there's something spiritual about when someone owes you something for seven years, and then you say, "Okay, being that you haven't been able to pay me in seven years, I'm going to wipe your debt." That, that's a spiritual, you know, law that was written thousands of years ago, it could be attributed to, you know, a certain people, but that has permeated itself in this culture, in the way that, you know, these things happen. So if you are a spiritual person, you understand spiritual laws, you will be in tune and naturally be in line with the way that um, money flows, the way that business works, that makes it optimal for, for everyone, 
you know, these are these are things that have come from traditions time honor that have come you know through um spiritual um spiritual guidance and like i said you know there's some people that have taken it literal and has implemented in every area of their life and um you see that there there's definitely benefits to be read so once we're in line we talk about spiritual economics within smart money university as well that's like an additional course. It's like an elective that you can take in addition to any of the courses because um, like we're saying our health is our wealth, but also which has been true on my journey, our spirituality is also our wealth. Once you're in line um, with certain spiritual principles, you know, as, as you mentioned, Brother Murray, um, your, your, your mind is clearer you have less stress, you're able to deal with um, any potential challenges that business or personal life um, you know, may come up and that's, that's always to help us grow. So if you're a spiritual person and you understand that when things you know, don't work out or you come up with a, you know, an obstacle is one to either teach you a lesson or it is to bring you to a better place. You don't get frustrated, you don't give up. You don't quit on your business. You, you, you press through with the guidance and you ask for guidance and you rely on your higher power and your connection with the um, highest power, the creator. So can you give me um, what your take is directly on um, spirituality and credit? Oh, sister, you know, we, we can, oh my God, am I on? Okay, <laughs> I have to check to see, make sure I'm on. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, great, great. I, you know, just a very good question, sis. You know, it's 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 really, and, and again, this is why the second book that I'm coming out with is really uh, a book that touches into spiritual realm of who we are, uh, how we think, why we think a certain way that we do. Because, you know, I can talk about credit, especially with Palm Deserves the Credit, that, that book basically is a grassroots book, you know, it's a really uh, basic fundamental book on credit because I have to talk to people in the area and the mindset of where they are. So now that we're there, now I have to move it to another level. It's time to get into the spirituality and the reason, the causes behind why we do what we do, why it's habitual, what is this that is really that turnkey that keeps us going back to borrowing and keeps us going back to um, not paying back as terms. Um, there's sometimes there are some things that are more underlining, spiritually speaking, it's more underlining inside of our, our cipher. So if we can funnel that and we can be able to um, position it accordingly to work in our betterment and our behalf where it could help us and our community and our children, yeah, that's the direction I'm going because that's you can't get no more um, in alignment. You can't get more no more spiritual and vib vibratory in our cipher than spirituality. You know, especially God fearing, God covering, God pathway, God leading, God consciousness. You know, you got that in place. Oh, you certainly going in the right path. You know, you know how many times sometimes like we're walking down the street and we have a notion to just make that turn on that corner. It's like, I think I'm going to make this turn. You make that turn and then you run into somebody that you have thought about and there they are. Now, for me, that's not coincidental. To me, it's kind of letting you know that you know you're on the right path. You know, it's definitely on the right path. So the book that I'm coming out with is definitely going to be more on the spiritual realm and you're absolutely right there is a correlation you know we have to get our spiritual house in order in order to be able to understand where we want to be how we're going to get there and and and, and you know you know I'm, I'm like forced to talk about what this book is going to say okay but i'm gonna just tell you one thing first of all first of all you're right there is a correlation one of the things that i do know and I know we all know this, okay? So again, I'm not trying to preach to choir, but this book, one of the things I'm gonna talk about is don't focus so much on what's going on right now in your life. Like if there are adversities, I mean, you have to obviously, 
but I'm talking about in terms of your goals and your aspirations. Say, so you have to live and act, or as one of my friends say, you gotta fake it till you make it. Act as though it's already happening. You have to act as though it's already happening. Whether it's your feeling into it, whether it's your, uh, you have your, um, you have a, uh, what do you call the, uh, uh, a, 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 a spiritual inclination, intuition, you know, you got to feel it right now like it's happening. It's not the other way around. You know, it's not like, oh, you know, you get there, you get there, get there, then it happens. No, you got to act as if it's happening right now. Why? Because it can open. You open up the porthole right now, spirituality, because, you know, when you're dealing with um, quantum physics, it's like you're now is actually happening. You know, like if you see yourself with a car that you want, you got to feel it. You know, you even got to go to the dealership and sit in that car and just smell the leather. You know, turn on the radio, you know, get in that car. Be grateful that you have the, the capacity to even think that you can have a car. You know what I mean? And you get in there and you feel it. So you got to do it in, 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 in the moment of time. You have to always think like that now, okay, as if it's actually happening. Now, here's a caveat. Now, once we get what we want, and once we finally attain that goal, one of the things we cannot do, and I, like I said, I'm not preaching to the choir. I know, I know everybody knows this already, but I'm just relating to what's gonna be in my book. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once we have attained what we've attained, and one day we're driving and we double park, and we're just gonna go to the store to get a sandwich or maybe get a soda because we're parched and we wanna drink something. We can run in the store real quick. And we come back and there's a ticket on the windshield. And like, you're like, how the hell did that happen in five minutes? I didn't see no meter made anywhere. I don't see him now. How did... And then you're like pissed off. You're like, ah, nah, nah. it's like, first of all, remember, be grateful that you got the car. You know what I mean? Know that that ticket is going to be paid. I mean, you can get pissed off for a second, maybe half a second, but just let it go. Think about the time when you didn't have a car. You know what I mean? Think about the time where you wish that you could just be able to just not deal with mass transit and travel and, and make deliveries and do the things that you always wanted to do in life because now you have the convenience of a car. But sometimes what comes with the car is you got to pay the gas, you know, you got to pay the insurance. It's all a part of the plan. So why be kind of productive and get pissed off when this is something that you asked for, you know? So, yeah, so, you know, the book definitely deals in that aspect. And I just want to touch on something else that you mentioned earlier, if you don't mind, okay? Now, you talked about the Jewish community, how, you know, with your um, religion, that's how the Jews are able to really ascertain the information and they move on it steadfast and unwavering. I'm reading a book right now, <coughs> excuse me. It's called The Jewish Phenomena. Okay, it's by Steven Silberger. Seven ways, excuse me, seven keys to enduring wealth of a people. So let me read the back of the book and let me tell you why I'm reading it. It says, revealing facts and statistics behind the Jewish phenomenon. Jews make up only 2% of the total US population, 2%. Now, I thought it was more, but it just lets you know the impact that they have in America, only 2%, okay? Uh, yet 45% of the top 40 of the Forbes 400 richest Americans are Jews. One third of American multimillionaires are Jewish. The percentage of Jewish households with income greater than 50,000 is double that of non-Jews. 20% of professors at leading universities are Jews. 40% of partners in the leading New York, Washington, DC law firms are Jews. 25% of American Nobel Prize winners are Jews. So you're right, sis, they definitely tapped into something that we already knew. But the only difference is that they're, 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 they're utilizing it and they're being steadfast and it is their mantra and they pass it on to their children and the children's children and the children and they're unwavering. 
That's what Marcus Makai Garvey, he never really, he never really hated Jews. He admired them. But at the same time, he said, well, wait a minute. We can do the same or better. Why? Because again, we have buying power. We just need discipline. We need to follow the rules and the regulations, sis, that you read in regards to business and, 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 and how we do business as a collective. And I always say this, and I'm gonna leave you with this. I always say, just imagine, all right, we've got about 44 million African Americans in America. We are $1.4 trillion in purchasing or buying power. Can you imagine if we were very, very consistent, just like in Black Wall Street, just like in Rosewood, just like in uh, Seneca Valley in, in, in Central Park? Can you imagine if we really came together as a collective and bartered and purchased within our own community and not allowing it to hemorrhage a dollar hemorrhage every six hours in the Black community, okay? We would be wealthy amongst ourselves, okay? We won't have to be able to go to no check cash and want to go to check cash in places where they're charging you ridiculous rates on a, on a check. You know, we won't have to worry about going to these predatory lenders and, and praying on our, uh, our weaknesses and praying on the fact that we're in poverty, okay? You know, we wouldn't have to deal with a lot of these things that we're dealing with right now. But as a collective, and that's why I say Marcus Sai Garvey and also the Nation of Islam and also the sister, your, your organization, they understand the value of the collective. And that's where we need to go. And that's why with the Powerful Pioneer Organization, that is essentially the blueprint, the mindset in which we are going in the direction. That's why I'm, I always call myself a powerful a proud, powerful pioneer member, okay? Because I hear, I listen, I look, and I see what each brother and sister is doing. And I never once, never once have I ever heard anyone talk about, oh, he's getting more shine than me. Oh, nobody's buying my products. Oh, you know, I, I can't black stream because I ain't getting no help. I've never heard that from anyone. Never. Now, maybe it's, maybe I missed it. Maybe it is being said, but you know what? As a, as a person who has been with Power Pioneer member for, for quite a while, I'm telling you, I've never heard of that type of mindset. And that's why when I listen to Brother Rojo, I listen to him and I see his actions. And one thing about, a lot of things I love about what the brother does is he give edification. He knows how to edify people. I mean, he, he edifies you to the level where you're looking around like, oh, talking about me, is that, oh, me, my? Oh, yeah, you know, and like when the brother does that for you, that's, that's when you know he's very passionate. He knows exactly where your heart is. So um, I know I'm a little long-winded on that, but since that's a great question, I hope I answered it some way, shape, or form, and I'll pass it back over to you. Wow, Brother Murray, you are absolutely right. I have never once heard anybody and I've been on, I've been on boards. I've been on like little boards of like little organizations that would do, you know, just small local work. I've been on um, state level, city level, and even regional. You know, I've been part of big organizations and things like that. And one thing that has always happened, I've always heard, oh, you know, this person, you know, took my shine or you know, why does this person get to coordinate this? It should be me. There's always something. And I've never heard that in Pioneers. You are absolutely right. And it just dawned on me because it should be naturally like that. So it didn't stick out in terms of, you know, this is something special because it just should be like this. You know, there's people that, that, maybe hear me on a call one time or never heard me on a call, but know everything about me, <laughs> know everything I do. <laughs> because yeah. Brother Rojo or one of the band ambassadors within the Pioneers has spoken about my product, about me, about my services. Um, there's Pioneers in Smart Money University. So Smart Money is um, spoken about and and promoted 
I mean, Rahul took my products, um, not only Rahul, but the, the um, I want to say the, um, the Calvary <laughs> that went on tour to these different locations, took my products out and served as brand ambassadors and served as liaisons and served as promoters and um, booking agents and, you know, so many things. And I'm so grateful because I've, you, Brother, um, Brother Murray, you're so right. I've never heard anyone say, oh, why isn't my, you know, why did my products go out there? Because everybody's given the same opportunity. All the information goes out to all the pioneers, not just one or two. And, and, and this is really, not, and I, I will always say this, that, I've, and I've always seen other B2B services, B2B network, and this is the most dynamic that I've seen in terms of what they're able to offer. Sometimes these B2B networks are in their own lane or just um, a lot of the businesses just like pile up, you know, within these networks because it might have a little clout. But there, I have not seen anyone, um, any B2B service as diverse as pioneers with the different ministries. And it is never any conflict. Everybody works together, everybody promotes each other and everybody has found a way to work with at least one pioneer. And I think that that's outstanding, it's incredible. So thank Sister you, PJ. Brother Murray. Yes. And um, there's a video that I have sent you with Brother Jason, um, a testimony. Um, is it possible that you could play that video before we bring on Kathy, if Kathy is on? And I give yes. thanks for everything that y'all shared. You know, also um, Brother Jason, who was a powerful pioneer member, Ancient Aura Jewelry. If you see any powerful pioneer member with that power chain, you know what time it is. Just say power. Power, give and thank. And okay, I'm going to play it. A testimonial just said everything that you just said in okay. less than um, a minute. Give okay. and thank. Awesome. And why we do these videos as our sister play it. You know, it's very important, even with this session we do. We do conference calls where we have health and wealth empowerment, business empowerment, and even with some of the conference call where a lot of the people who join and tune in, they love the information. I have a few people say, I need to see y'all. I need to see people eye to eye. I need to see this sister. I'm like, okay, you need to see? Okay, so we're going to put you on Zoom. We're on black stream now. Now you see us, right? And you hear us and you see the people. I'm not just edifying or my brother not just edifying you can hear him in the flesh you can see him virtually as well okay that's still not enough okay now let's get the testimonial going let other pioneer members who business has benefited who family is benefiting who building better communities establishing powerful businesses family businesses giving thanks Again, as Sister PJ get the video going, I don't know if it's on. Um, oh, you don't hear the video? No. Oh, wow. I'm not sure why. No. Hi. Um, I'm sharing the screen. Anybody looking at my my screen? Can um, Are you seeing the video being shared right now? I can yeah. see it, but I can't hear it. Hmm. Interesting. All right, you can play. Y'all can do your thing. Let me try it again. Did you? Did anybody hear that? No. Okay. So, by the way, I don't think it's working. I'll try it again. Also, maybe at the end. Let's see if it works.
But yes, I also wanted to touch on um, um, just very quickly um, spiritual economics and what it really means um, for the whole community to benefit from that um, and using wisdom in our business and our business practices, um, how we're relating to each other, how we're relating to our business. Are we really doing that thing that, that we wanna do when we wake up in the morning? Who's, who's not working a day in their life because they're doing what they love? You know, um, that is very spiritual, being in line with your purpose. Your purpose should be what is sustaining you because you're in line with why you are here at, in this moment in time. So the road is paved once you're aligned. So there are many people that try to do other things but are not successful, but until they are brought into alignment, then they can really prosper. And sometimes that takes a journey. Um, for myself, I, I always avoided writing. Um, I've always wanted to stay in the realm of publishing, but now I am a ghostwriter um, working on a project for a Powerful Pioneer. And I, I understand now why I was put in a position to learn how to write. So different things are being revealed to me. I'm on a spiritual journey. I have been for many years. I don't think I've ever um, not been on a spiritual journey, but it's been um, truly transforming for myself and my business to be in line um, and just understand now what my purpose is and what I'm here to, to bring forth. And it's something that I wanna share with other people because I've seen you know amazing things that we, revealed to me, you know, some things that I, I don't even believe sometimes. And I want to continue this discussion and this, um, this line of support from what I'm calling the entrepreneur. And we're going to get the class started um, next month. And we'll start off um, with one hour informationals, getting things um, kicked off, getting people a taste of um, what this um, course is all about. And once we get into um, this, you know, the course itself will be a ongoing course where people can come in and come out um, as they need support for that inner entrepreneur. So definitely go to smartmoneyuniversity.org. You can look at all the courses there and the course virtual economics is there. You can sign up right now for this course and we will provide a, a discount for any of the um, the members here on the call um, who are listening right now who want to take that particular course, you can write to me directly and I'll send you a link that has a discount, a 20% discount for that course. All right. And so that's exclusively just for this weekend only um, until Sunday night, 11.59. That deal um, will expire and the course will be at its regular price again at 2.49. All right, family, so given thanks. At this time, we're gonna transition. We're gonna hand it over to Sister Kathy. She has a presentation on her business, exuding wellness, an amazing business um, in the heart of New York City. And I, I won't give too much away, I'll let her introduce herself. Sister Kathy. Are you ready for us? Hey guys, how are you? Can you, okay, can you see me? Hey! I see you. How are you doing? Great, thanks for joining us. Thanks for our support. It's a blessing. Um, so, it's a blessing. thanks for pulling together a, a presentation for um, us engaging with this week's Black Friday. So take it away. Can you, can you make me host? Awesome. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sure can. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we're just going to make it bigger. Um, so I am the founder of Exuding Wellness. And my entire mission is just to help you to unleash your greatness. So we do this by renewing our mind, energizing our body, and bringing joy to our soul. 
right? It's a trifecta. If one part isn't in alignment with the others, that's when you start having discord in your life. Once you start balancing everything and working towards bettering yourself in these three areas is when your greatness starts coming out. Um, so basically I started um, by just trying to make healthier choices for myself, right? It was finding out that we are literally being poisoned on every level was just heartbreaking, especially as a mom, because it's like, I'm giving this to my kid and like I'm poisoning them and they're not going to have the life that I had. And it, it was just insane. So I just started, you know, helping my family. Then I started helping friends and then people wanted to like pay me. And I was like, oh my goodness, yes. Um, so that's how my business started. I was literally pregnant with Des when I, um, I was selling on my yard, just having people pass by and just buying my products. But um, it, it definitely it branched out from there because now we have a personal care line. And the whole thing is for you to customize your own wellness, right? So we have powdered products that you can use as a mask. Um, you can ingest by putting it in water into a smoothie. You can add it to your bath or you can use it as oral care where you use it as a toothpaste or as a mouthwash. Um, and basically the whole thing is to edify you, right? To, to give you that energy, to feed your body on the cellular level so that your cells are strong enough to start removing toxins. Uh, we also have our um, tea bags where you can do them as teas, as tonics, as baths, and as steams. The whole thought process behind this is we shouldn't all fit inside of a box, right? So why is it that our products are, aren't multifaceted? Like we should be able to use things that best fit our lifestyle so that this way we're more consistent on it. The more we have to incorporate things and, and try to remember to actually do them, the more that we end up failing. So by having these products and they're in their raw form, which means that they're going to last forever. So even if you're not consistent with it, when you're ready to do a mini cleanse, they're here for you. Um, I also have a sea moss cookbook and it shows you 10 different ways on how to use sea moss. So sea moss contains 92 of the 102 minerals that your body needs, right? Again, I'm super, super big on feeding your body on the cellular level. So for me, I don't like the taste of sea moss at all. But once you start mixing it with foods, it works as a thickener and it doesn't have like that oceany sea taste anymore. So in the cookbook, I show you how to use um, different, I show you different recipes on how to, to use sea moss. I also offer services. So nutrition again is super important, right? Whatever you put into your body, that's what's going to fuel it, right? And so many times we're using, you know, box stuff or canned stuff, or we're ordering out or we're doing the drive through and that's not properly fueling your body. That's just kind of sustaining the hunger. So I offer um, meal prep. It's plant-based meal prep. And every month we switch themes. So for September and October, we're doing alkaline. Um, and then I also offer a three-day juice fast. So juicing is so, so good because you're giving your body nutrients without giving it the, the fiber and the heaviness that it actually has to digest. So you're, you're able to keep your body up and moving, but it's doing a lot more internal cleaning because it doesn't have to stop doing its job to digest. In liquid form, it can literally just grab the nutrients right from the liquid and then just go right back to work. Um, and then I also do a pantry makeover. So this is when I go to you and we literally go through your entire pantry. Let's talk about the ingredients that you have. What ingredients are you very used to using? Let's, let's actually read what is in your spices, in your boxed items, and then how to make healthier swaps. And then I do body work, right? So I offer um, massages as well as stretching and cupping. You wanna be able to move your body 
and remove the toxins from your body because as the toxins begin to settle, they just compound on top of each other. And this is where we have our aches and pains, right? This is where we have improper circulation where we can't move the way that children move, right? We, we have to move more robotically because we might actually pull something. So this is what I do. I come in and I help you work out all of those kinks. Let's get everything up and moving so that this way your blood is properly circulating, bringing you the much needed oxygen and nutrients. I also do coaching. Uh, so it's really, it's all about unleashing your greatness by renewing the mind, energizing the body and bringing joy to your soul. When we're not in alignment, we feel off. We, we don't make the proper decisions, right? We're, we're not motivated enough. We're not encouraged enough. And that's what the coaching program does. It really shows you that you have everything that you need within you. Let's align with your purpose. Let's, let's really tap into why you are here and what your light is supposed to do for other people to help them see and we do that in, in working in groups as well as working together because it's really important that you build a support system, right? Because after, after the program is done, we wanna make sure that you continue to, to succeed and you're continuing to unleash your greatness, right? It's in the ing, right? You're unleashing is because it's an everyday task. Like you literally have to unleash it every single day. It's like, you turn on the light every single night so that this way you can see throughout your house, right? So let's turn on your inner light so that this way you can see what you're supposed to be doing and what actions you're supposed to be taking and how you're supposed to be helping others so that this way you expand on, on your God level. And then these are some testimonies of some clients that I have worked with. So we have Drea and she basically didn't love herself. She was going outside looking for love and, and trying to be fulfilled in, in other places. And so in working with me, she realized that she needed to love herself and find out what she was really all about in order to begin to, to, to portray that onto other people. Um, and then we also have Priscilla, which I helped her to energize her body in a natural way where she wasn't purposely putting in toxins just to make it through the day. And this is my contact information. So we're doing a sale on literally everything. Everything is 25% off from now until um, Sunday. So Sunday at like 11.59, it's gone. The, the promo code is powerful. Uh, so you can just go to my website, exudingwellness.com, and you can book the services um, and you can book the product. You can purchase the products as well. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Do you guys have any questions? No, yes, it was yes. Peace and love. Peace and love. I have a, I have a question. Giving thanks, Sister Kathy, and I salute Sister Kathy for the work that she has been doing, and she's um, mobilizing what we call Mom's Penor. When we talk about building strong family, building better communities, and establishing powerful business. Giving thanks. One of the things um, that we discuss in our topic discussion is the ups and downs, the science of, of above and below. And just hearing all the things that you offer, um, you know, one can recognize that you've been through certain journeys that, you know, naturally brought you from your low point to the highest point where now you can bring these resources to the people. What are some of your journey that inspire you to do the, the, the uh, and provide the services that you offer? Um, really just my journey of, of losing weight, I would say started the, the whole food part of just being able to, to eat healthier and understanding what exactly GMO was and, and the type of growing environment that our food went through when it came to like animals and even the fruits and vegetables. Um, and then really just learning how to love myself, like understanding that everything around you is a reflection of how you feel about yourself and, and 
really coming to terms with that because I'm, if you don't know, I'm kind of a control freak and I like to like know everything. So just knowing that I was creating the, the people and, and the environments that were stressing me out was, was super, super huge. And that's like where the, the whole coaching part comes in because being able to work that out and, and even just feel like other people are going through it as well. Like, you know, like you're not alone. Like we all think negative about ourselves, right? We all let fear come in and, and try to talk us out of situations. And like, we all have those moments of like, what if this doesn't work? You know, like, like, what if that, that person I wasn't supposed to let go? Like, what if I'm supposed to stay here because you don't want to give into that, that feeling that's pulling you towards something else? Does that make sense? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Definitely, sis, definitely. I salute that. And the other question I have, and this is an add-on to what you just shared, you know, when we look at the analysis of a steers, and we say, again, the science of above and below, again, it's so easy for one to just go down 15 flights or 21 flights of stairs, you know, naturally. But to walk up those stairs, to go up that 21 flight, this is where the journey comes. And, you know, some people, you know, going up that flight of stairs, they may stay on the, the, the 10th floor for a minute and stay stagnant. They might just stay there and hang out because, you know, 21 flights. But again, when it comes to going down, it's easy. With that analysis I just shared, when it comes to the alkaline lifestyle, health and wellness and whatnot, we may see people may start at one level and they may go up and say, you know what? I'm inspired by what Kathy's doing and what she shared, how she lives. So I want to become a vegan. So from a meat eater, they start going up them stairs. And, you know, it's kind of hard, you know, because now you're talking about alkaline and, you know, all this bunch of extra science. And it's like, hold up. You know, I'm here trying to go. I'm on the eighth floor right now. And my legs are shaking. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back downstairs. And they go run downstairs and go get that chicken, chicken and waffle. <laughs> Where, they, where it's comfortable and, 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 and may stay there because that, that, that's the comfort zone. What is, the, what, what is your um, perspective on that, um, on those who want to raise up but might have a hard time so they may go back down where it's more easier? So when I first started my journey, I was like, yo, I'm an alkaline vegan, right? Like, like my journey was to get more energy and it was literally... Um, Professor Eric and Dr. Sabi, like those were the two people who like so motivated me to like start fasting and to to just rid my body of stuff. Um, but then I went to the supermarket and I couldn't cook. Like literally, I burnt eggs. Hamburger Helper did not help me. Like it was so bad. So I was like, I'm an alkaline vegan, and I went to the supermarket and I didn't have any alkaline options. So. I regressed, right? And I went back and I was like, well, should I try that? And it just didn't work. But it's, I learned something from that, right? Like I learned that I can't jump out the window because if it doesn't work, I'm gonna go like right back into the house. So it was, how do I take those baby steps, right? Like you said, like, how do I go like floor by floor? So let's, let's start with giving up meat for breakfast, right? Like you could go up a flight of stairs, you could do fruit for breakfast right you could start your day by just saying affirmations you know like like you can do those baby steps it's it's not a sprint like it's legit a marathon like you're in it for the long haul because it's an ongoing thing like every day you want to be better than who you were yesterday right it's not like tomorrow I'm gonna be like this smoking hot supermodel who's super loaded and has all of these people cooking right like it just what are the odds of that right like that's like a two percent chance that that would ever happen to you but every day you start working towards that right you start doing literally one thing if you've never read this book it's an amazing book it's um it's called the one thing by alan something you type in one yeah um and he just talks about like literally you write out everything that you want 
right? Like set, set your dream life, set what, what you truly, truly is going to make you happy. And then do one thing every day that's going to bring you closer to that. What we do is, is we get overwhelmed, right? We're like, yo, I'm on floor eight. I need to be at 21. Like we keep on looking at 21 as opposed to like, let me just get to nine. And then from nine, let me just get to 10, right? Wait, we're so the ending, right? Let's, let's just get to the ending that we even, we, we miss the journey. And for that, how many lessons are we not learning that we're still making the same mistakes because we're not living in the moment and we're not seeing where we came from and how much we have grown to allow that to encourage us to go forward. Instead, we're seeing what we still have left. This is why I, I, I encourage my clients to do swaps, right? Instead of this, what else could you do? Let's, let's focus more on the solution and, and other alternatives so that this way you're eating healthier, you're, you're communicating in a more loving manner and you're loving yourself more. That's it. That's powerful. That's powerful. And sis, definitely you know, with what you just shared, you know, is a, is a way to climb up them stairs or the way when we talk about climbing up that ladder of success or climbing up that ladder of wellness, financial wellness, health wellness, and not feeling like, you know, oh, because things is not going my way, I need to go back down, Right. you know, and, and, and even going into the science and the spiritual aspect of food, when we talk about negative and positive hydrogen ions in that sense, I want to share something, and again, I would like for you to add on. So I had one sister who I was consulting had mentioned, um, I'm tired of, and she's a vegan, I'm tired of um, incorporating my personal, my business. You know, we create this character as far as this whole vegan lifestyle and whatnot, and we push it out there business-wise that if somebody sees someone eating a, a, a hamburger, <laughs> It's like, hold up, vegan hamburger, what's going on? The contradiction, you know, and, and, and it is important to separate business and personal and working with a lot of elders. And this is where the whole science, again, of above and, and below, bad and good, because when we look at negative, positive hydrogen, hydrogen ions and, and positive hydrogen ions, we understand that positive hydrogen ion is what we want to stray away from when it comes to the science of alkaline in relation to the body. We want to have more negative hydrogen ion. So when I hear that and hear people may say, as a vegan, I want to, I want to stop being a vegan now because it's hurting me mentally. It's, it's hurting also me physically because I'm feeling malnourished. It's hurting me spiritually because I can't hang out with my people at the, 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 the jerk chicken fest, you know what I mean, because I'm a vegan. What, what could you share about that with someone who's going through this journey and this is why they remain stagnant on the floor because it's like, I want to go up, but I don't know how to, how that relates spiritually or, 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 or scientifically. And I'm, I'm around with so much people who just prefer being on the first floor. Right. Oh my goodness. Right. And this is, and this is where you face that moment of like, you know, I got to let you go, but I don't want to let you go. It's that that fear of the unknown and then the the complacency of the current and it that that's such a big hurdle and this is why I encourage everyone to find a coach you know and if you can't get a coach then find a tribe like you need to be able to have someone that you can vent to and that that you can talk to about the feelings that you're having because like you said, right? Like all of my friends are meat eaters. And so now I can't go out with them. So now I'm over here feeling lonely. And then the vegan community is so harsh because it's like, yo, I can't eat a vegan burger or else they're going to like spaz out, you know, like, so it's, it's that whole divide and conquer where you never actually feel secure within yourself. I'm going to be there in a minute. Um, so, so I, I encourage you to again, take, take the baby steps, like work out what you want and stop trying to compare yourself to everyone else because 
yeah, it's good to see where other people are, where other people are, because then you kind of get a gauge of, and more inspired, right? You get more inspired by what everyone else is doing. That's like, oh yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, I would love to try that. But they're not the bar, right? The bar is to be better than who you were yesterday. And that's it. And this is why we create goals so that we have something to look forward to and why we do action steps so that this way we feel better. But if you can't make it up the next step, it's more of ask yourself, why not, right? Why, why, why can't I go out with my friends? And it's like, well, oh, because they're going to the jerk chicken spot, but why can't you just order sides whenever you go out there? It's not like you have to eat something from the menu. Every, every, every place has a side menu, right? And then it's, oh, I feel so malnourished. You know, I need that freaking protein. What am I going to do? And then it's like, you can go ahead and take supplements, right? And that would help you. You can start looking into getting more minerals and, and that would help you. And then it's like, oh, well, you know, I feel, I feel a spiritual disconnect because I'm always so tired because I'm drained from all of this. And then it's like, well, we can do meditation, right? We can do fire breathing to help you get into that. You can actually do a fast, which focuses on replenishing your body with massive minerals. You know, like we get stuck on the problem, and it's like, here's the problem and here's the problem as opposed to let's be solution finders, right? If, if this way isn't working, that doesn't mean that your goal should no longer be your goal. It just means that you're taking the wrong route to get to your goal. It's okay, Don't right here. All right, so it's like, let's, let's, let's not quit, right? And there's no reason to start over. If you messed up, if you stay on this floor, even if you go back like two floors, like you're good. You literally just, you're good. You needed to rest. You needed to relax. And there's such power in going backwards, right? Because in order to, to fling the slingshot, like you got to pull that bad boy back. Sometimes you need to go back to where you were in order to realize that that's not what you want no more. Right, you have to go back to what that comfort was to experience it to be like, yo, I totally outgrew that. Like, yo, I thought I needed that, but I legit don't need that no more. And then what happens? And then now you you racing up level four, five, six, seven, eight, and now you're on level 10. And it was like, yo, look at how fast I got here. And it was just because you needed clarity on what your next move was gonna be. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks. This is my last question, and I'll okay. pass it back to PJ. Um, and definitely, again, definitely check out our sister okay. Kathy's website. Check out her um, social media. Definitely support our sister services. Wonderful family business. Um, you know, just hearing and, and seeing your journey. And even, I guess, thanks for, you know, you joining the Alkaline Lifestyle Workshop and being an Alkaline Lifestyle representative. One of the terms we discuss in, 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 in our workshop is alkaline extremists. And one thing I can acknowledge about Sister Kathy and how she not only create her products, but also with her meals, she's not an alkaline extremist and she understands that science. So one of my questions is in relation to the term alkaline extreme, for those who are extremely into it and don't understand the science. And the other one question is dealing with judging, you know, since you changed your lifestyle and decided to go wellness wise, of course, have you been judged? And also, have you been in a position where you judge others who may not be in that lifestyle and why? So that's the reason why I don't um, claim anything was because of what the vegan community was doing, right? It was all like, so you were either vegan for animals and then like, how dare you kill a mosquito? And it was just like, it was a lot. And then it was like, oh, well, you're, you're vegan for health. And, and then it, like just into like the food and the ingredients and they were, everybody was just so harsh. And it's like, why do we need to divide? Like there, there's no, I don't understand the whole division part, right? Like, I, I can say that going through what I have gone through, like there's no way that I could judge someone else on what their decisions are, right? Like it all, again, it comes down to the journey of we, we may share a path for a certain amount of time, but your destination is not mine. 
And even if we're going to the same place, like you're going to get off on a different floor that I'm going to get off. So how could I judge you, right? And then for someone else to come in and start judging you, that goes down to the whole trifecta, right? Because if you're judging, then it's like the, if, if that's the whole point, of, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I lost track of where I was. Kids came in distracting me. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> I'll jump in. I think he was asking also to um, have people judge you. That was one of the- Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like the other question. Yeah, it was, it was, it was more of you know like how how I was moving in in the vegan field and why wasn't I promoting more of the animal aspect or or why was I eating boxed and canned just as I was moving up and it was you know like because I wasn't in tuned exactly where they were and then to know that they then had issues themselves that they were projecting on me and I wasn't secure in my my journey at that point to even stand firm on something right because here I am still learning and you know oh I have all these people and I'm going to learn from them and then to find out that they were like judging me off the decisions that I made it was like no like I can't tell you that when when I had found out that they had um aborted fetuses and, and animals inside of, of the vaccine. And I was like, um, I can't give my kids vaccines. Like they went totally crazy on me. And it was like, oh, so now I can't be a part of the group because how, how do I not um, protect my children? And I'm like, what? Like, I thought we were vegan in this. And then it was like, oh, so then I don't eat um those those uh what is beyond burgers and and stuff like that and then it was like oh so now you think you're too good for us you know like it was it was always something in a decision that I was making because I was trying to better myself right my whole goal was to to get more energy to release the toxins and their whole goal was just to save a freaking chicken and because of that there was discord and there was judgment You know, we, we come from similar backgrounds in terms of like family, you know, kind of being in our business, like we're close mm -hmm. in our vicinity of family who are coming from a different lifestyle. So they're seeing everything and they're commenting on everything. And it's really difficult, I think, to not seem crazy to them right and so you're trying to maintain your sanity but they are clearly looking at you with that you're crazy look on their face and it's just like wait a minute like even and I know there's a lot of things going on there's a lot of conversations happening right now but just in the fact that that so many nurses teachers you know other medical and you know um educational academic professionals professionals have to say I'm not a monster because I don't want to take a shot you know I was watching I forget what channel it was the other day and they literally said that I think they said um, people who didn't want to get the shot were either parasites or like it was a really really like bad word it was like such a negative connotation it's like a personal choice how does that lead to now you're like, Marvel. you know, the worst of the earth person? Oh my goodness. It's, it's crazy, but it's, it, it's so crazy. And I think we are really at a crossroads right yeah. now uh, in terms of um, people just wanting to make individual personal choices. You know, if you want to eat meat, I don't think anybody should judge you for that. If you want to eat you know, the sun, <laughs> you know, there are some people that are 
they, they call it helio variants that live off of just sunlight, right? And I didn't know that. People, we can put that into like extremism, but if it works for them and they're living their life and they have energy, what are you really saying to them? Exactly. That's, Honestly, just sit back and watch <laughs> and <it>. listen. <laughs> That's it. Like it's it's and this is where like I'm not sure what happened that we feel like we're entitled to control other people. You know, it's like we're we're here to express ourselves, right? And and we're here to to make ourselves known, but we're all here to learn and to grow from each other. So to say that because I don't agree with you, now all of a sudden I'm gonna cut you off and I'm gonna isolate you is it really it's immature because we should be at the point that say, listen, I don't agree with you, but we can agree to disagree or we can debate this out, you know, like let's let's learn something from each other so that this way we might actually change our point of view. But instead of doing that, we're 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 again we're isolating, we're just like listen, no, 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 you don't fall into no, it's almost like high school, right? Like you're not part of my crew. So now we're just gonna like diss you. And it is retarded. It's so retarded on like so many levels because it's 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 breaking up families, it's breaking up mm -hmm. friendships, it's putting our economy in like mm -hmm. such a bad predicament. And <laughs> it's so funny because I literally just finished watching My Little Pony. So they have the new My Little Pony, and it's like mm -hmm. out of fear, these people created like this machine to go ahead and attack all of these other people. But there was this song and it was called Angry Mob. And he was like, you're not even thinking, right? Like you're just brain brainlessly following and just going with it, right? Because they said so, or because they told you something as opposed to gaining both sides, right? When, when did we stop researching? That's, that's what totally, totally gets me. It's like, oh, well, you, you listen to, to this news channel, right? But you didn't listen to that one. You know, you got your, your, your information from somebody at the water cooler, but you didn't even bother to Google it and to look into it. So where, and it's, and it's not just in, in what's going on right now, but it's, it's totally in general about everything. Like, I can't tell you how many people have like, aches and pains in their body, but they're not Googling mm -hmm. natural remedies to take care of that, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're totally unhappy with the life that they're living and they're going to a shrink and the shrink's giving them medication, right? I don't like the medication, but what am I gonna do? Dude, you're gonna like renew your mind. And, and they're not mm -hmm. even seeing that. It's almost like, this is the choice that I have and there's no other one when it's like, dude, look around, right? Take the blinders off. You have like infinite possibilities. And I remember the name that the gentleman used to refer to, you know, quote unquote, unvaccinated people. And he said they're, they're pariahs, the pariah unvaccinated person. And it's like, to use that type of word, to, what is a pariah? You know, when you hear that word, you know, this is someone, this is, you know, a fish that eats other things, right? And it feasts on it. So unvaccinated people are feasting on the, you know, it's just a weird, it was just a very, I feel very weird, poor choice of words for a journalist, a professional um, to be using on an international platform. And the notion and the, um, the, the, um, the aura that's being placed around um, a certain group of people who are making a personal choice through a, a difficult time and I really hope that things like what the, the work that you're doing the work that we're doing collectively like the healing hangout can be a sense of where people can just come and really talk about health and feel comfortable to express themselves um I remember uh, you, you you mentioned um extremism um by the rojo but there was a woman that I had met and she made every single thing for her six children by hand. From the almond milk, from squash pasta to, to just everything. And she was just like so tired, but she was just like, I, you know, I can't, you know, have them eat, you know, you know, store-bought food. 
but we, you know, some people were kind of like, oh, what is she talking about? But other people were interested and engaged her. And I think that once we create spaces where we can really just let it all out how we feel, how we want to live our lives with, without a judgment, I think we can get to some really miraculous things. Um, because I feel like that's someone, you know, I wish I could speak to her now and figure out some, some, you know, things that she was making, you know, from scratch that I would like to make now because I'm not finding it in the store. There's been a lot of progress made in stores, but now I see that some of the stuff, you know, are disappearing. So it really, you know, behooves us to talk to other people, to be around other people that are of like minds and, you know, want to be healed um because i wanted to bring up this aspect too the spiritual aspect of healing and actually wanting and accepting healing into your life how many people have you know your clients have blocked healing just like bleeding like they, they might be conscious or subconscious of it but until a person is truly ready right kathy you work with so many people until somebody is truly truly ready to make those changes in their lives they're going to be making excuses after excuses, you know, going around, you know, whatever it is that you're putting in place and just totally, you know, giving up at the end. Um, so talk about it's how- funny, um, I, I call it the, the yeah, but syndrome. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, but, yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, you know, people, I think the healing sounds cool until you really understand the work that it takes. <laughs> Especially if you've been living a certain lifestyle and it's so easy to just go to the store, just so easy to do this. And when you have to put in work to really let healing into your life, you know, talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, it's, it's, it's just like you said, right? It's like, oh, I have all of these big dreams and, and I have all of these huge goals. And then, you know, everybody starts off like really, really good. And then you're like day four into it. And it's like, uh, it got hard. Uh, it got, it got, you know, life happened, stuff started coming up. And then now all of these excuses happen. And then, and then some people can actually be like, you know what? I messed up. And that's totally fine, right? Like I tell you, you can have a cheap moment, right? You can have the cheap meal. You can have that breakdown. You can revert back to where you were. But how long is that going to last? How long are you going to stay in what you didn't want and then start moving forward? Breaking down barriers is hard. Like you have to come face to face with you. And for a lot of people, that's, that's, that's a fact, yeah work right like that's that's mm -hmm. like work because we're so used to just yo you know I don't want to deal with that right now and then just pushing it to the side and I don't want to deal with that and and then once you have to start dealing with it and and then the moment comes when you realize that you're self-sabotaging yourself and then it's like okay so I know that um I shouldn't be doing this but then you just can't help yourself and for some reason yeah she's just floated up out of bed and into the kitchen and then miraculously like the spoon fell into the ice cream and it just landed into your mouth and then the whole tub of ice cream is like in your belly right it was like how did that even happen because we're on autopilot right like like have you ever been like I'm gonna be in a great mood today I'm gonna be in a great mood today I'm being a great mood today and then what happens like some guy tries to cut you off somebody skips you in line at the supermarket and you're like all right I'm gonna be in a good mood today I'm gonna be in a good mood today and then I don't know you get into an argument with somebody and it all just boils all up and then you're like oh well I guess I'm not supposed to have good days because you don't want to be consistent with it, right? Because you can't be like, let's pre-plan, right? Let's let's continue to, to move forward. Let's focus on the goal. And this is why the why is so, so, so important. Like you need to know why you want to change. You need to know why you're going on this journey. You need to know why you pick that goal because when those moments happen, you need to be able to go back to your why and your why has to motivate you to continue to take action. If not, then 
that why wasn't strong enough and what you really want is not what you really wanted. It's just what you thought sounded good, right? How many times do you hear of other people's journeys and you're like, yeah, I want that. Yeah, I want that. And then it gets hard. And now you're resorting backwards and it turns out because you wasn't even supposed to have it because you're not in alignment, right? Because you were fighting against the grain. And that right there is that make or break point, right? Because when it starts getting you hard, you're like, well, maybe this wasn't my journey. Maybe I'm not supposed to push through. You know, everything is going so wrong because I wasn't supposed to be on this journey. But then you could literally be like two steps away from your golden mind. And this is again, why your why is so important because your why will get you to the gold mine if it is strong enough, or it will elaborate to you that you never should have been on that path. And now you need to like forge a new path to get onto your correct path. Does that make sense? Yeah, because even in my, you know, I, I serve um, to myself a lot of different things. I'm mean, psychoanalyzing myself. I'm like my old therapist. And I came up with my why. Like I, I went on a health journey as well to change um, some things in my life. And one of them was to be able to be well enough to perform well in my business. Um, a lot of people um, don't know, I haven't shared with a lot of people, I've shared with some, that a lot of challenges in my business stem, stemmed from me having um, health issues to deal with. And I was losing a lot of time, a lot of, you know, my performance wasn't where it needed to be for my business to grow because I was, you know, lacking in the physical, the energy and all of this. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to really be present. I really wanted to perform better in my business. And, and that was a strong enough why to get me motivated to really change my whole uh, entire eating habit. And once I saw results, it was like, okay, why ever go back, you know? Um, and you do have those cheat moments that I am. I, I did cheat my birthday. I cheated a lot, but then I regretted it, right? So next birthday, I'm going to remember, like, you know, I had to deal with that same thing, you know, my business being affected because, you know, I wanted that cheat day. And, you know, I'm glad that I had it and I had it and, you know, it was good. And then now I can move on to have different experiences. And one of the things also I realized is that you really have to want it. Once you do find your why, um, you have to want that change on every level, on the spiritual level, because you might have temptation. You have to want it on the physical. You, you want to be able to feel it, allow yourself to feel the difference, to feel good. And you want to be mentally prepared for all the work <laughs> it's going to take, you know, um, to, to reach your goal. So I commend your work so much. You're getting so many people to unleash their greatness. And I know that your clients are super grateful to have you and more clients to come. So we give thanks for you and your, the information of Exuding Wellness. Again, visit exudingwellness.com for more information. And Kathy, if you want to give more um, information, I know that you have a, a great Instagram and social media presence. Um, so again, we're doing the 25% off. So it's on all of the services, the meal prep, the cleansing, the cupping, the stretching, the massaging, the pantry makeover, um, all of the products, the, the tea bags, as well as the powders. Um, and then you can find me online. So I also have a private Facebook group for those of you guys on Facebook. It's I am exuding wellness. And it's, it's literally, it's, it's, where you come to unleash your greatness right where mm -hmm. we're doing tips we're supporting each other because you need the tribe right and not everybody can afford a coach not everybody actually wants to have a coach but you need people who are like-minded with you because they're the ones who help you grow right if if you're full of a room full of people who were who you were you're not going to be able to become who you're supposed to be so once you start mixing and mingling with people who are on your same journey or have been in your place and you're able to, to get more information and, and learn more about yourself and be able to explore 
what makes you happy in a safe place. So that's what my group does. Um, but you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Exuding Wellness. And if you have any questions, you know, you can definitely hit me up on Telegram or on my website, info at exudingwellness.com is my email. Thank you guys. Thank you, sis. Thank you, Kathy. There's, um, I, it's about um, 1045 at this point. Um, I know we have a couple of people on the line that haven't shared. If you would like to share, um, I think we're going to close the call around 11 o'clock. So please do share um, quickly before we end the call. Um, please do share your business. Um, if you want to provide provide any discounts um, for today, this week, um, please do um, share that information. Or if, if you want to keep it for the weekend, however you want to present um, any Black Friday deals or specials you may have available. The floor is open, giving thanks. Okay, great, great family. So we do appreciate everyone for joining us, um, being a part of this space and um, sharing and listening and being engaged on this Black Friday platform um, brought to you by the powerful pioneers, Blackstream.live, Smart Money University, MCE Credit, Exuding Wellness, Sacred Bows, all that um, that we bring to the table. And everyone plays an amazing part on, in making this all happen. Um, I want to give a shout out to AIU and Brother Yomi um, for providing um, uh, some technical support. Um, it's really a, an amazing collective that comes together and, and this is how we are able to do what we do. So just wanna acknowledge everyone and um, definitely just um, state again that our Black Friday deals um, do happen every Friday. So it is Black Friday every Friday um, throughout the Powerful Pioneer Network and um, its affiliates. So there will be a Black Friday uh, call in Zoom and stream next Friday. So please do join us, same time, same place, um, 8 p.m. And um, we'll soon add a, a rising, a daytime um, time as well for, for the Black Friday because it does last all day. And sometimes it can extend to the weekend and into the next week depending on what um, the entrepreneur, what the business owner is doing at the time. So please make sure you're always checking in. You're always letting people know about Black Friday um, because they you know, don't wanna miss these deals. Um, if they get something during the week um, that they could have gotten on a Friday, um, I'm sure they would have you know, like to know about it. So do spread the word. Uh, we'll obviously be having, you know, a culmination of all the Black Fridays on the quote unquote um, Black Friday day um, where we'll be celebrating Black Thanksgiving and um, supporting a lot of merchants at that event. So there will be even more Black Friday deals and specials. So definitely look forward to that. You know, um, plan your budget around it. <laughs> so you make sure that it is beneficial to you and to those around you and um, for your future you, all right? <clears throat> Again, thank you for being with us and have a, an amazing, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. sorry. Have an amazing night. Giving Amen. thanks, family. Peace and blessings. Give me thanks, give me thanks, I share. Thank you, thank you. Give thanks, give thanks, peace and blessings.